again people ladies and gentlemen children of all ages utr probably presents talk yo shit we are back in this thing once again and we about to tonight tonight is gonna be fun tonight is gonna be real fun this is gonna be uh the start of our trilogy behind the industry and the first the first segment of it is you know behind the music basically you know we're gonna we're gonna get deeper but we gonna you know we let you know about that a little later but uh before we before we get started before we get started the professor please if you would take the lead for just a quick second um as y'all know the king of the late night the early day ratchet has passed away mr jerry springer mm. so uh can we please have a moment of silence for the king of late night talk shows, Mr. Jerry Springer. Mm. And on we miss that you, note, brothers. We miss you. We miss you. We gonna miss you. We gonna miss you. We gonna miss you. Miss you. Cause uh, y'all remember back in them days, especially when you was young. Uh, you stay up at eleven o'clock just to watch them fights. But I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. That's what we did. That's what we did. And uh, we got one. We got one more thing we want to do. So, Professor. Uh. Would you want to take your shot first before I, uh, yeah, y'all, y'all got a little drink with you? Take oh, yeah, your no shot doubt. for, uh, Mr. Jerry Springer. Gotcha. And also, I want to tell Mama Cookie and, um, <laughs> Mrs. Spencer, my dad, happy anniversary, y'all. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to y'all. We know y'all out there doing y'all thing. We know y'all out there celebrating this, this wonderful life that y'all have built together. You no, know, so we want to say happy anniversary to y'all because you know they're they're def- they're definitely watchers. They're definitely watch. They definitely watch us. They definitely love us. So we got to give a shout out to them. So with that being said, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, first question, first question. Oh, and uh, like I say, before we even get started, remember, like, comment, subscribe, YouTube page, Instagram page, TikTok, Facebook, all that good stuff. And Miss Heather B, if you could please, you know, put links or, you know, whatever that needs to be put in there. And uh, with that being said, let's get into this industry talk. All right, first question, y'all, first question. When you think of the word industry, what is the first thing that comes to mind? For me, it's, uh-huh. it's a lot of things that come to mind. You know, I think about not just music. I think about TV and film. I just think it's anything that pretty much gives an insight or produces something that you like. Okay, okay, okay. Well, when I think of the word industry, you know, I think of it as a whole um you know music music movies uh behind them behind it uh just basically the life of a celebrity is what i think about when uh these things come apart so yeah so that's what i think when i speak of the industry but uh continue on with the conversation i think of the same thing uh just the complete conglomerate of just entertainment on the whole and just honestly, okay. I think it's the good and the bad. <laughs> what page conglomerate on? <laughs> um, but as the industry, I just, as a whole, I just think of I just think of it as just a huge machine that utilizes people's arts. To be honest with you. Okay. 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 Per- personally, to me, I think of the industry as a as an endless realm of. Okay things that piques our interests and and that and that can include like anything with music or entertainment like it 
it pretty much gives the people the platform to showcase their talents within the arts. Okay, okay, okay. Bless you, Professor. By the way, I saw that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I agree with all you guys. I mean, I think in the industry is is something that um us African American folks or us minority folks excel in. It includes uh the music, the film, the sports. Um it captures all of the above because we we don't just do one. We we seem to be multi multifaceted. And I don't know what page in the dictionary that's saying, so don't even ask me. Um but we seem we, we are multi talented in, in, in various things. So um anything that you could take into a professional level, I would consider that the industry. Well okay. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Well said, brother. All right, but before we but before we get moving to the next question, can we please get to the comments, please? Yes, we can. Uh, May Love is in the building. She says, greeting everyone. What up, May? Hey, hi, May. Up, May. Back. How you be? Edward is in the building. He ain't been here in a minute. Welcome, Welcome back. back. What's going on? Hey, we you, man. Yeah. Good, to, good to see you, my brother. What's the deal? What's Heather the deal B said, is? please follow the link tree to follow oh. all of our social media platforms. And Kristen is in the building. What up, Kristen? She said anything economic up, is the industry to me. And Edward said, "Hey yo, welcome hey, back, hey, hey, hey. All right, so let's get to the next question, y'all. Uh, what record label do you think had the best artists? <laughs> what record label do y'all think that had the best artists? Yes, yeah, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Are we well, speaking yeah. just like overall? Are we speaking specific time period? Because I mean, we ain't saying happened. nothing like inner scope or nothing like that because that's too many motherfuckers. But I mean, right? right. Like, like, what? I'm gonna take it back to Motown. You ain't saying, hmm? Motown? I'm gonna take it back to Motown. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a left hook for your ass. Some Ryan Garcia should have been throwing, but anyway. Another story of the day, but no child. Okay. I said Jeff Roll. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I heard you. I heard you. New. I heard I'm going to cheat and say Ariston because of the, their, you know, extra conglomerates and extensions. Because I can't. It's hard. Ariston. Ariston. Oh, I'm going to say someone didn't pronounce okay. that correctly. But... Okay. That's, that's, that, no. That's not well, that's baby facing them, isn't it? No. Well, the face uh, is baby no, facing them, but it's also a part of Arista. That's why I say I'm a cheat. Okay, so yeah, that's Arista. what I'm saying. I'm like any part of because you know for some reason when people say baby face, they say Arista too. So that's why I was like that's that's not the same. Yeah, thing. no, because he's a little okay. face. He's a little face. So that's yeah. why I mean he has his own yeah. he has his own uh subsection of it. So okay, I get it. I get it. Um, um, to answer the question, um, I don't know if it's that wrong, but it's, it's close. But uh, mm, I'm gonna say so so there. How about that? <laughs> so, yeah, I said it. So, you so all Brad, so Brad, so Chris Cross, Bow Wow, as the best, yes, you the best. You miss, you trolling, you miss, you miss, <laughs> trolling. <laughs> trolling. Fuck y'all. Ain't Charleston White shit. <laughs> go, the you, go, you know the go home of the nigga in, in uh, <laughs> that call himself Babble. Jay, I'm go ahead, here. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I'm trolling tonight. Jay with a spoon. You gotta smellinate. You gotta smellinate. Smellinate. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. I got. But, um, I got go kind of a hard ass question because I want to say death row just. <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> the era I grew up. I mean, we got a biased opinion because we all from the West Coast and we all grew up in a time. True, era. but I mean, hmm. let's just be honest. Bad, okay, bad what boys was what was uh? Bad boys wasn't, wasn't, wasn't whooping them at the time. What, so. what was Wayne's? What was Wayne's record called? I mean, a uh, record label called Little Wayne's. Who? What was they called? Oh, you talking uh, about money? Cash Money? Cash yeah, Money? Young yeah, Money? Young yeah, Money? Young yeah, Money? Young Money? Oh, yeah, young <laughs> money. You really said that? I'm trolling tonight. Mm. Everybody wants to troll. Hey, I mean, oh See, my I mean, god! I can make it. it no, I'm dead ass though. I'm dead ass when I say uh, death row. Don't okay, I, I, I'll take I mean, it. I might, I might have to go backwards with Aerostar or Motown because you know Motown did have some shit back in the day. So I can't, I can't even knock that. You know, Stevie Wonder, Temptations, Smokey. 
No, but but like I said, it's hard to it's hard to compete with Devro because like I said, you got Snoop, Dre, Tupac, the Dog Pound, which really motherfuckers didn't really care about back then per se. But hey, you hey, know, what, please, what? You know. if you think about it too, who owns Death Row now? Snoop Dogg. Exactly. Came back okay, 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 okay. Good question. Good, good, good answer. But who's on the label though? Besides it don't matter. No oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Hey, nobody on that label now. <laughs> it's cool. He just he just got the catalog. Let's just be honest. But whatever. Can we get me uh, But before we before, before we go any further, can we get to the comments, please? Thank you. Oh wait, me should answer. Let me answer real quick. Yeah, go ahead, Meach. Okay. No, no. Like like you said, it's hard to pick a label, but if I have to say, I got to go with Ruthless. <laughs> no what? <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all have, have a good night. Wait, I'm wait. walking off. Okay, besides NWA, who else was on Ruthless? Okay, excuse me. Besides NWA and Bone Thugs, who else is on Ruthless? And Michelle. Wait, she count? Oh, oh don't, really? don't do that. She didn't even have, have, have a part. She didn't have. She didn't have a part. Straight out of Compton, she had to make her own movie. Oh. Out of here. Yeah, good. You know what? Damn. You so know what? I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna no, go this is my. This, explain your answer, then we can move on. Yeah, it was, not, yeah it was malice. <laughs> You be, you, you're not trolling. You're not trolling, right? You being truthful. That that's that's really who you pick it as. your best, in your hey, opinion, your hey, best. I, mm-hmm. I, think I, I think he's real. All right, we go to the comments. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say maybe the Ninja Turtles is on there, but anyway, um, you ain't shit. Comments, comments. Uh, <laughs> Kristen Nobody said, "Hey y'all." Like, yes, yeah, uh, Kristen said, "Hey y'all." She also said hey, Motown, Jersey. depending on the timeline. She also mm. said Right Aaron. That was referring to the Motel. Um, she also said Sony Records owns Arista, don't they? Good point. I don't know. Maybe. Sure. I don't I don't know. I ain't done my yeah, history, I'm not quite so. sure. The, these guys are, are straight from the dome. So we haven't done no research. We don't right. know. There's no research on. in here. So this is this is straight off the top of our heads. Facts. Eli is in the building, y'all. He said, What up, Eli? What the deal, my guy? He said, It's either Dungeon Family or Def Jam. Okay. You can't can't do Def Jam, though, because that's like doing Interscope or that's like doing, you know, that's just too broad. That's like Interscope or BMI or something like that. Technically, there was no, you can only. You can't do this. So if that's what he picked, that's what he picked. Y'all could have did the I same. I mean, if that was, okay. but that was, if that okay. was the case, I would have chose like Heather said, Interscope or something. So okay, you could have did that. There was no one saying that you couldn't. But but yeah. but but yeah. to each his own. But to each his own. We're not even gonna argue about that part. We got more shit. We got more shit. Kristen said Columbia too. Uh, May Love oh, said, "Slip and slide records, LOL." <laughs> 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 hey, hey, May, you're not going to the corner. Like, you know, guys, what the hell? Hey, 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 Eli yeah, said, yeah, yeah, do, 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 yeah. Do, do, it's, it's worth a Google, it's worth a Google, Chris. So come back to us and let and let us know if they if yeah. they both on there. But Dungeon, but Dungeon Family definitely, definitely fire though. Dungeon Family is definitely fire. But uh, let's get on to that. Let's get on. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, mm. on to the next one. <laughs> that was my shit. Why do you think? Why do you think the industry is pushing? The homosexual agenda. Why do you think the industry pushes the homosexual I agenda? I think. They oh yeah. Pushing it because I think they're pushing it because you know, right now that's something that's really out there and it's so political. And you know, if you're in with them, then you're in with this, and it's just one of those things where you know what we got to kind of make people happy when it's just. Let people be who they want to be at the end of the day, in my opinion. But I just feel like they're pushing it because the the community has an issue with so much stuff. So instead of them saying, okay, you know what? I feel like they're being X, Y, and Z. Let us push this. And then, you know, we fit in with all these group of people. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Before anybody else uh, give an answer, can we drop our disclaimer real quick? 
that you know yes that we have no we have no uh no ill manner or malice towards anyone's sexual orientation we have no problems with anyone that is in the lbgtq all the mnp community and, and sometimes why community we have um like I said, whatever you do, as long as you're not hurting nobody, we love it at the end of the day. So please don't take anything And these anything are just our say. opinions. These are just our opinions at the end of the day. So please don't take anything we say to heart. Is nothing malice towards your sexual orientation or your beliefs or anything to that nature. So with that being said, can we continue? <laughs> also, if it's any sort of like trigger and it's something that you don't choose to talk about or you don't want to talk about, that's perfectly fine. If you want to take a second to step out, that's, that's okay. But please come back because we're not trying to <laughs> come on back. We're not I trying to upset you. We're not trying to make you mad by any means. It's just questions that were asked. That's it. That's all. It's nothing to piss no one off. We just hear you talking, having a good conversation with y'all. That's all it is. So with that being said, keep it pushing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer and say yes, for, but for uh, different reasons. Um, I do believe that, I do agree with Pud when it comes down to the LGBTQ community, that sometimes things, they're just a bit sensitive about certain things. So I know that it's more of a cater uh, to that community nowadays, but I also feel like the industry wise, they're pushing it, not only just to push it in people's faces, but they know that they can get money off of it. And the industry is not gonna push anything that they know that they can't sit here and make a profit off of. And I say that because look at when Nikki first came out, like when I say they was pushing her bisexually, bisexuality down people's throats, because they knew that it was something that was going to get her the attention that was necessary for them to make the money they need to. So yes, I do think that they push it, but I think if they push it for their own personal gain. Mm. Okay. Okay. Intriguing. Good um, point. For me, for me, I feel like they are pushing, they are pushing the agenda because of the whole equality perspective. Like they want to pretty much showcase the fact that, yo, yo, we should not be isolated because of our, because of what we stand for. We sh we should be showcased as human as well. So, I feel I feel that they push that narrative because they want to be known and they want to be known and treated as equal as everyone else. Mm. Okay. That was a very well, safe answer. Well, okay. Um, well, I think personally they're pushing it down for money reasons because, like I said, they're trying to cover all sides of the board and make sure that, like people, like y'all just said, that they're not isolated from anything. And I think personally that uh, they're trying to push it into people's faces to make make it seem like it's supposed to be one way, as is. And, and that, um, how should I say that? Basically, saying that this is right, and because, like I say, even because y'all y'all see the videos on Facebook, YouTube, and all that other stuff, like stuff that was even pushed in our faces as as kids, even at our ages, stuff that was pushed in pushed in our faces as kids, but secret subliminal. But now I think it's more boom because, like I said, I don't think that because it's not frowned upon anymore. It's not the back in our day when we were younger that it kind of was frowned upon. So they had to kind of do everything through secret coding and innuendo. So therefore, that's why it is pushing our faces now because they don't want to be canceled, as they say. So that's my opinion. And with my opinion being after my opinion being said, can we go to the opinions of the people in the comments and see what they're talking about, please? Uh, double A didn't answer. You always want to cut somebody off and go to the comments. No, it's all good. <laughs> I ain't cut nobody off. I, I thought everybody spoke. Nope. Mm. Go ahead, the boy. I'm gonna just. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm keep it short and simple. I'm gonna take the cheat way out and say, if you like it, I love it. I don't really have any more comments to say besides that. Nothing wrong with that. 
Um, Kristen said they do. She also said, yep, they have them along with Nelly, Miley Cyrus, Bruce Springsteen, Celine Dion, Little Nas X. The list is heavy. What Nelly is she talking about? Colum- uh, Columbia. Oh, okay. I, th- I thought you were talking about country grammar, Nelly. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> she just put me on something new. He, he is on Sony, though. It really was on Columbia, though. That's crazy. Hold on. I, 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 didn't know the comment. I thought she was talking about uh, the LG. Never mind. No. Oh, no, not that one. Not, 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 not that one. He, sorry, he, no, he, sorry, just got a, he just got a problem. He just got a problem with his, with his thing, with his, with, his, with his shit not being on, uh, what's her name? On Twitter. Uh, Twitter. But, yeah. <laughs> but with that mm. being said, we're going to get on to the next question. Why do you think the girl group error disappeared? Why do you think the girl group error disappeared? Why? I'm going to say because it was too much cattiness. You know, someone wanted to be a lead. <laughs> somebody probably was messing with somebody, man. You know, it was just a lot. It, it was just, I, I think they basically just, they couldn't keep it together because it was always somebody wanted to be better than the next. Mm. I believe that too, but I think people got tired of the girl groups, and I'm going to be honest with you, even the guy groups, because it just became, it was always the same conglomerate of not conglomerate. It's just the same old cycle. What you face is that on? <laughs> well, you find them, you find a group of motherfuckers, you put them together. You figure out who the star is. You start pushing that motherfucker towards the front. Some drama happens, and then they break up. Basically, the same thing over and over again. And most of the time, it's industry driven as well. It's like they create the mess with, like the group probably don't even have no issues, but then it will be people in each other's ears, and it's just, it's ridiculous. And I just seen something what Christine said. Yeah, the groups disappeared from America, but in K-pop. They're still thriving. Okay, and, we, we're not going into the comment tether. I'm sorry. It's yeah. just that was also on my head too to say that even though the groups don't happen out here no more, it's still happening in you know other areas. It's just we don't care for them no more. Well, um, just to piggy, just 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 to piggyback off of it, I honestly think yeah they. Huh, I think. Uh, one person got pushed to the lead and then the other group didn't really feel that person should be the lead they should be the lead so it was just a lot of um and then not to mention it may be the distribute the, the distribute of money where this person may get more because they sung more of the songs or more lead on the song or whatever so therefore it might have gotten to a in the way of success so I think personally that's probably what it is. I mean, but like I say, not just girl group, but guy groups as well. So that's my that's my take on why I think just groups period disappear like that. Honestly, honestly, it is ego and also jealousy. Because jealousy could play a factor into the groups girl, girl or guy that that could cause the derailment of their success and the elimination of the whole era of groups period hmm. and then most of the time these so, groups are they're formed when their kids are teenagers so most of the time they're being told what to do you know, by the adults that are supervising them. Like I said, like a lot of the drama that starts, like we all see the new edition movie. Like Ralph didn't want to be in front, but guess who was pushing them in front? The people that were in the back. So all of that shit is just created by the the people in the background. Well, I don't think it was just, I don't think it was just that, but okay. I mean, you brought a new edition, so. No, it wasn't just that, but just it was a part of it. Oh, I'm just saying. We knew it. I I kind of just focus on one side of that of the coin, though. Like I think that's the most common side. But what happened when people just fall out of sync, fall out of love with singing, or what happened when people just want to move on to bigger, better things in life, or what happened when people just want to want to go independent? Or again, we just put together as kids, and now I'm grown up, and I no longer want to sing because I had this type of experience in the industry. So I just think, or just plain and simple. 
I don't like you. Or I don't want to sing no more. I don't want to rap no more. I don't want to. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, and that's another part. I just think that they didn't like it. They people don't. Some people just don't like each other. Just but they're they're together to. They think that's the this is their way but, out of poverty. I think that's just one aspect of the coin. I, just because I don't like the other four people on the screen doesn't mean that I don't want to be part of this group anymore. I'm not saying well, that. I'm not saying that they're you know literally, but I'm just saying like people oh, do things. Okay. Pe- people just you quit your job or you you know you lose your job or whatever the case may be. You move on. For, you move on to bigger, better things in life. You don't just sit there and just ponder and sorrow. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Yeah, that's true. I mean, some people actors. leave. Some people leave groups and go on to be actors. <clears throat> Tyrese. Um. TGT. I mean, I know he's a poor, shit. He was he's back a, way before TGT I, came. I, I don't know, <laughs> he, he, he don't even sing no more. I go there. Although I did, I think I did say I, I did see a concert tour from today, which is really weird. Like you're not doing Fast and Furious. I don't know what you're doing. With you, sir. But no comment. <laughs> anyway, I say all that to say that I just felt like you guys kind of just captured the negative things of why people are not in groups no more. I think the other side of the coin is that people just move on to bigger, better things in life. Uh, I think y'all all doing. just went left with it because the question was about girl group era, and y'all went to a whole thing of all the groups. True, but, that but it's still true. okay. I understand that, but it's still I mean, it was just, I mean the, door, the door was left open, and it just happened like that. I mean, sorry, no, but okay. But uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know why girl groups are no longer in existence anymore. I'm, people just don't like them no more. I don't. I wouldn't That's say it. that. I wouldn't say that because we well, all. I love wouldn't it. say that because if you if you're sitting up here and you're watching SWV and you're watching um all that, then apparently you do like it or y'all just like the drama. Sure. Either way, go. I mean, still like it. we was all rocking with Desi Child as of ten years ago, maybe even five years ago. <laughs> so, well, again, Gerald, you wasn't, but I think a lot of people was. Okay. That's facts. Or maybe the other question is, too, music, maybe. does the music call maybe. for nowadays for girl groups? That's I don't, I don't know. Why would it call for girl groups? You you said the and then music. another and then and another thing is some people don't want to share the spotlight. But another, another I, I, question. I think that's that. that's just it's gonna come down to a personal opinion of why you think girl groups don't exist. I don't think anyone would have any of us, any five of us, will have an answer because no. It, it, the, the question it's, was it's like a multitude of answers. Girl groups exist. The question was why do we think the girl group era like went away? That was the actual question. Well, exists, went away, no longer with us. R.I.P. Not the same thing. But anyways, we're gonna go to the comments. Yeah. Kristen said, I think K-pop emerging as the group machine the group machine could contribute, especially since they often cosplay black music. She also said, I also think that the industry doesn't focus on relationship theme music. It's now drug use music. I saw a quote that said, Our generation listened to drug dealing music. What's being pushed now is drug users music, not love and heartbreak, which I think is group music or spiritual music, bread and butter. Great comments. I, I, you know, personally, she probably didn't answer the question either. If you want to be, she didn't. I'm just reading the comments. Okay, but I think she makes some great points. But you know, I don't, she did. It, it, if you want to, okay. Reason. Let me explain. Let me explain the reason why I said that. Because there's another question that then dives into the men group. That's the reason why the questions were broke down that way. That's Ding why bong. I said. What I said. Oh, okay. Next question. Well, I mean, take take technically, it was already answered. Answer. So, <laughs> so we gonna go to the what next one and say, what music? <laughs> what music producer do you think was shady? What music producer do you think was shady? Was what? What Baby music face and producer? Pebbles. I'm not gonna put all that on. Baby. I'm not gonna say babyface, Pebbles, baby, but what? I mean, read. Pebbles contract that she had with them girls too was real messed up well they was married so they was together on this shady ass book exactly. <laughs> That's what I said. and pebbles for sure and baby mm. face uh mm. 
Puffy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go around. You are that? absolutely correct. Rest, rest in peace, but he was a shady dude. But yeah, I mean, but like I said, uh, Andre Harrell, he wasn't from what I've heard and seen that he wasn't, you know, he'll put groups in and then didn't really pay him the way they, I mean, giving every group 360 deals, I mean, I, I guess that's normal when you first come out, but even after, you know, you sold a certain amount of records, you still wasn't getting paid and you still wasn't, you know, acquiring the taste of life that you thought you were going to get but with the with the success that you had, so it was just, you know, he was finding every nickel and dime to not give and keeping it for himself as so he could prosper and his artists didn't. So, and then, like I said, he groomed Puffy into what he is. So I'm gonna I'm a start at the source to say Andre Harrell. Anybody else? Uh, I'm gonna say Don King. <laughs> You didn't pay Mike, and you was charging eight thousand dollars for tiles, nigga. We know what you was doing. <laughs> but anyway, right. wrong, type of, wrong, wrong type of producer, right? My bad. Producer. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree with Jay on Andre Harrell. Probably one of the worst of the worst. Mm, in my my you opinion, probably, you can even go. You can, you can even say Shug Knight too. So, but oh shit, you can you can say you Jerry Hill. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Facts, like, facts. Um, I didn't even think about Jerry. What, what, but yeah. what was the dude that, that that was with uh Whitney Houston the night before she the night she died? What was the white Rick man? Ray Davis. Ray Davis. Clive Davis. Oh, wrong. Music producers. I mean, am I lying? I mean, what business? Are just business. Okay, you're right. You're right, Heather. But I'm just saying, just because I'm like, yeah, all the motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, them motherfuckers was shit. shady, and I'm not oh, talking about really aftermath. Is. I don't know. The, I don't remember the name, but um, I, it was it was another white guy, but he was like the creator of all the like boy bands, like NSYNC. That motherfucker was extremely shady, and he did a lot of those groups dirty. Oh, uh, not not to you will wipe the ass out with some detergent. No, I'm just playing. Okay. Not to mention Chris Stokes, too. But anyway, um, damn, nobody even thought to say that. Damn. (laughs) Chris Stokes is not dirty. He's just a pervert. He's just perverted. He just, uh, never mind. No, no, he was dirty. They did the same thing. We're not trying to get, we're not trying to get kicked off right now. But, um, me, everybody has a question. No, he too busy nah, to think get about pips. It, no. yeah. <laughs> Here come off the wrong okay. answer. Here we go. Y'all brace yourselves. Hold on to the table. <laughs> no, I ain't no off the wall answer. Y'all basically took all the names. That's about to be like April. April O'Neil is not a producer, just so you know. But go ahead. I'm I'm not fucking with you, bro. <laughs> you can't meet cuz. He ain't fucking with you for real, for real. You made the cuss. <laughs> all right. He's a reporter. Let's go to the comments, y'all. Please. All right. Comments, Kristen please. said, also, I meant for real groups. She then say they don't want a group of women singing about nothing but sex. She also stated, look at Chloe and Haley, how they branched off and the subject of the music changes. Uh, mm. She also mm. said, girl groups are too limited. I think now also female artists are more like to just collab as opposed to forming a group. Ooh. I see that, and that's true. And she said, only in America had ass. No, <laughs> that's my ass off. <laughs> and then May said, leave me <laughs> alone, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> the same person who said, sip a slide when I say, leave me alone is crazy. <laughs> I think he was trolling. I'll, I'll leave him alone, May. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. What artist would you want to give advice if you was going into the music industry? 50 Cent. <laughs> Without a shot of a doubt, 50 Cent. Can you repeat the question? I was going into the industry. Repeat the question because you kind of... I thought my wife kind of... What, 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 what artist would you want to get advice from if you were going into the industry? I'm sorry, and I'm going to have to say 50, but you know I always say 50 when it comes to that shit. <laughs> Go back and look at all the shows. I always say 50. 
For real. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, but if not, that's a hmm. who else I kind of like mm. as a music artist. Is this dead or alive? Or I, I go, <laughs> y'all kind of cheat with 50 though, because he, he ain't a music artist no more. Tupac, what last last bit of song. And, Give advice to or get advice from? Get from. advice from. Get advice from. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. People oh, yeah, don't realize advice. Pop is smart as shit. So he could give me True. advice. True, but he was kind of getting ripped off too. So I, I don't think I would take it. Advice. Yeah, but the, the reason. So so mm. here's the thing. You got to think about, look at Pac and the shit that he went through. You got to think, even down to his music, where it was conscious rap, it was this, it was that, it was acting. So, to get advice from him, let's just say, if he didn't get killed, where would he have been now? We don't know, but I'm pretty sure he would have made it pretty far. So, that's another person that I wouldn't mind getting advice from. Okay. That's me. That's my opinion. You can't tell me. I'm not telling you anything. Oh, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> But you can't tell you something. You gotta smell a name. Shut up. I can't smell a name. Smell a name on that. One person for me, if he was still alive, it would yeah, be Michael Jackson. Mm. Well, we don't do that. I might as well say Prince. Do you know that man? Every time he performed, he sung all his shit. He's never had a sample of anything. What does that to do with giving you? advice though what i'm saying is his advice he made great money he did everything on his own as far as not sapping anybody else's music and making his own music you can learn a lot from this man actually you are absolutely right but you say all that but at the end of the day like but here's the thing you, you have to learn you. consistency you, you ask me but we're, but we're, talking, we're, we're not talking about the man's so giving talents talking. we're talking about the industry that but it goes hand in hand, actually. They really do. It. it doesn't, though. Oh, no. oh yeah. him sampling music is, is, is the industry. Okay. Okay. That's fine. It's he didn't sample any music. What I'm saying is this. He never sampled any music, and everything that he made, he made a lot of money off of it. So, therefore, I can learn, like she said, consistency, to learn that I don't need to borrow from anybody or use anybody's shit in order to make it in the world. Hello. Thank you. Point. And not to mention the whole fight that he went it up was. with Warner Brothers. That does have a lot to do with the industry because he was, who else did you see going head to head with them and saying that this is my identity, this is who I am. And if you don't want to pay me or show me what I'm worth, then I'm dropping the name. I'm not I, doing I, anything. I, like I that. Go, Let's go I with it. a question. A question. And my I'm thing not, is, how do you ask me, who do I? Me as a person, and then when I say a name, but you you already gave three names already too, though. So at the end of the day, like how well, many names? It doesn't you matter. Give? My thing was you asked the name. I said who I said, but you're trying to tell okay. me that that person wouldn't have no. Uh, why your, what's the point of me getting something from them? Your name was fifty. You agree with okay. Jay? Okay, and then I, I agree with Jay, and then I said okay because he and had that look on his face. I said and Michael. Then, did, did you want to do you want to say Park? And then said she said, Pac. Mike. Then she said, Michael. Then you said, Well, I might as well say, uh, and I and I, and I said, I might have that was bouncing off of me is, because of Michael. The thing, and is, is, the thing is, go ahead, you can get information, you can have them and get advice from their people. That was the question. Then when I said their name, why would I get advice from them? That's that's what you asked me, so I answered the question. Well, and then you said that that, that can go. If you want to go back to the original question, choose one person you would choose to get advice from. You just okay, Prince. Hello, there you go. You, you better. All right. Keep, so keep that's going. your final answer. It's Prince. That's what my, my final answer is Prince. All right, Gerald cool. Gerald took okay. fifty cent. I'm going to go over Prince. I didn't get a chance to explain why I picked Michael. <laughs> go ahead. The reason why that I picked Michael is because when you think about the music that he's created and his manner and just his whole image, period. I really would want to pick his brain on how he views music, how he sees music, how he hears it. Like me being someone who loves just music on a whole, that is the person that I would want to talk about. 
are talked to to get that type of information and advice from. Just the whole creation of it. And just, again, he was the same way. He still stayed consistent. Even his worst album still made a good amount of money. So these are people that I would want to talk to in regards to just surviving the industry, period. Okay. Me? <laughs> Honestly, for me, I'll have to go with Baby Raphael, Nice. Manitella. <laughs> baby face okay anyways Go ahead. i'll have to say baby face just for on um, the music production perspective like like i don't i don't want to pick his brain like when it came to him you know basically mainly producing his own music and how he would go about doing it, especially during the whole New Jack swing era. Like, I would definitely want to know, like, mm. where, where, where would, where did he go about, you know, creating all the classic hits, the classic hits during the during that era, and even to this day, like, basically learn how to maintain longevity as far as the music production perspective is concerned. Okay. All right, and, and with that being said, can we go? go okay, what's up? Answer. Real quick, then we can go to comments. Okay, is that cool with you? Yeah, good, okay. All right, if, if I'm going to choose to get advice from anybody, I'm going to choose from to get advice from a billionaire. I'm going to go on with Diddy, the longest tenured uh, artist slash producer in the game. Billionaire, I said it. I'm not going off of anyone that's a hundred millionaire. I'm not going off anyone that's not well diverse in the industry. I want I want the advice from someone who got long long endeavity. In the game, and okay. I don't know what that's a dictionary that's on either. Call Big Boy from Power One Hundred Six. Uh, I can tell you, I can tell you, don't pay your artists. That's a, that's all they're gonna tell you. But anyway, um, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to get cheesecake for the nigga either. I'll talk his ass out. <laughs> I, I think, I think you would, I think you would take that walk for some reason. But anyway, I, I would not. Still mm-hmm. the same. Diddy is good as then, 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 like then, then you got to be, and then you got to be on your hat too. So I, I think you'll walk to Brooklyn real quick, but. That's easy. I wouldn't be losing money if I made sure that all my ducks were in a row. If I knew, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. But we that that will be for a different show. So let's get to the comments. My Wi-Fi must be true. Um, Kristen said Clive Davis. May Love said you hush a. Uh, (laughs) you know you were watching them girls pull over because that ass too fat. Whoop whoop. (laughs) <laughs> Eli says Jamie Fox. Johnny's in the building. What up, Johnny? Yeah, Johnny, oh, Johnny was happening, oh, my, my boy. What's what the up, deal, bro, bro? my guy? Uh, Eli said, now that I think about it, I would have, I would want to have a conversation with Andre 3000. He also said, if talking longevity, I would want to have a convo with Bun B. Hmm. Mm. I don't know what y'all going to talk about, but, you know, keep it true. <laughs> you fucking stupid. Anyway, next question. Do you think selling out is the only way to make it in the music industry? Do you think selling out is the only way to make it in the music industry? No. No. Whew. Um y'all not gonna just say no and then act like not give an explanation. Y'all gonna have plenty of right. examples of I'm gonna say sell out and still how to cult following and make money. Can you make it? Can you give an example? Tyler the Creator. All right, cool. Um, Meet you said no. As, hold on, Gerald. Meet you said no. Gerald, hold on a second. Meet you said no fast too. Can you give an explanation? <laughs> no, no, because I was gonna say people think like people think like that's the only route to take, and it's not because once you once you sell out, you basically lose yourself within the industry and once you lose yourself it's hard to regain your former self back can you give an example of someone who you feel like didn't sell out that didn't lose themselves like off the top of your dome hmm. other than Tyler the creator if you can't it's fine uh, I just hmm. you know I, I I honestly can't right off the top of my head but okay. that would be my that would be my viewpoint cool go ahead Jay it's on you um, I'm gonna say 
yes and no. Yes, back in the day. No now, because I think, yes, you had to do, you probably had to go in a different realm that you didn't really want to go as far as music wise in order to be, in order to have that machine behind you. So that's why I think you probably did had to, you probably had to sell out back in like the, you know, the nineties or whatever, in order to get that one hit. And then once you didn't fulfill your obligations to that, uh, what's on to that company, you became a one hit wonder and you just fell off the face of the earth. But now no, because a lot of people, you know, because we have, um, different platforms, um let different platforms like you know on social media to where you can have a cult following to where independent you being independent can help you grow as a mute as a musical artist and you're going to still have that following regardless if you have a record label or if you're signed to a record label or not so i'm going to say yes and no depending on the time era that we're in yeah, I think definitely mind. identity is a lot more important nowadays than you know, selling out to be God, to be honest with you. I mean, look at look at an artist like XXX and who he was. Like if a person really wanted to sell out, he wouldn't have continued his music the way that he did, but he had a fan base. He had people who honestly loved that shit. I, I agree with Gerald's answer. I, I think it's a yes and no depending on what area that you was that you grew up in. Um I think over the pandemic, we watched people like Joyner Lucas and uh, Moneybag Yo, you know, have a million followers on YouTube and, and have a, over a million followers on Facebook and Instagram, be very successful. Um, Moneybag Yo couldn't even go on tour because he was on house arrest and he still was able to put out albums and, and songs and and to this very day seems to be very successful. So I don't think in today's society, you don't really have to sell out as much. Um, I just think it's about knowing the right people or getting the right stream, getting the right blend of people. And you can be very, you could go viral on something and, and be, you know, famous damn near these days. So, I mean, I, I think uh, social media and putting yourself in front of the right platform, in front of the right people can get you kind of far, or f- much further than what you would in the past. So, you know, I don't think in today's society, you don't have to sell out or, or in order to get what people once did in the past. I want to say, say that. that I feel like in one way or another, almost every artist, not every, but almost every artist or most artists have sold out in some type of way, whether it been a song that they just really didn't agree with or um, going a different way with a certain style. Everybody has sold out in some way, but I don't feel like it would have made a, make or break them in the long run. But that's just me. Okay. I, just, I got a question. What is the definition of selling out? Though? I feel like selling out is not keeping. It, it, it wasn't just directed at you, Professor. It was directed to everybody. It's directed to everybody, even if I know. But what I was the answering the question. She was answering. No, the I'm, I'm, answer, I'm letting the you answer, but I'm just saying. Mm. I'm just saying. Yeah, he was just emphasizing. Not, I knew the I'm question was for everybody. Not towards you. Okay, I so knew yes, the question for was for everybody. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, please. I'm good. I'm done. I answered the question. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just going, going, okay. Selling out is basically not only just going against what your original identity is, but conforming to what is popular for the time. And you're not continuing with what you were doing initially. You're basically selling out to gain more fans, to get more money, but you're no longer true to what you were doing from the get-go. So basically following the hype is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That is I agree. Me. I agree. Leaving your identity to follow the hype. That's what I believe selling out is. So yeah, I get it. But I, I think that over time, you have to conform to some type of standards because either you're going to be left in the past or you don't keep up with the current. So I think mm. that we, we we see artists these days and we wonder why, like they can't perform or they can't keep up with today's generation in time. I just think that they're just stuck in a in a, in a past and we're no longer rocking with him. So at the end of the day, you're, you're sometimes going to have to conform or you're going to have to change who your true identity is to stay current. 
I don't always consider that selling out. I'm just it, it's, yeah. it's keep yourself relevant. But it's a way to. I think it's a way to still maintain your identity, though, and you know, keep up or you know, change it just a little bit. Like there, like I said, Tyler is one of those people. Like he still stayed true to who he was from the gate, but he did change up his style just a bit. Like basically, he became more. He got more into the sound of the music, so it became a bit more uniformed and polished. Like I don't wouldn't see that as being as selling out. Other than Tyler the Creator, can you name somebody else who didn't change or didn't sell out? Because we, we already used Tyler once as an example. I mean, you said the name already, the biggest person ever, which was Prince. Huh. That is another person. So okay. basically, so basically, A, hey, what you're saying is if you change with the times that is a form of selling out and not staying to your true identity i mean or is it that, i, I or can't necessarily is, agree with that I, I i mean at the end of the day we're all going to do we're all going to jump out our our comfort zone or our safety box in order to become to go to the next level sometimes or to stay relevant or to do we, we, you never the, the most successful rappers or most the most successful entertainers don't always stay in the same realm as for example we've seen drake drop a whole pop album and that's way different from what Drake started at. We once saw Drake write his own lyrics. Drake has a writer now. Like I think rappers do things in those certain directions that we necessarily don't understand or don't, don't necessarily don't always agree with. But it's a it's a form of relevancy, staying you know current, staying you know fresh. You know I, I don't think that sometimes being who the same person you was when you first came in the game is not going to be the same person or sh always shouldn't be the same person who you are when you leave the game. Now, I think Prince, when you go back to their Prince realm, I think that's a little bit different. I, I think those guys are a special lane, and, 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 you know, those are like a cheat sheet, or those are like a cheat card where, again, those guys are always going to stay in their same realm, and they're always going to be who they are because of who their names are and what they brought in their past. So, mm -hmm. um, Michael Jackson and Prince, I would ne never want to see them conform to so nothing different than what they always did. But then again, we did see Michael Jackson kind of change. That, that last album he dropped, and I ain't talking about um, – this is it, but I'm talking about you know the, the album with butterflies on it and everything. That was a little bit different, Michael Jackson, than we was used to from the early '60s, '70s, and '80s, and you know, so you know. I mean, you're you're, you're right. right about that, but and I understand that you're saying that it's technically like a, a cheat code, but it still is, especially with the Prince conversation. It still is an example because that's what he lived his career by is I by. Mean, Continuing that, individuality. Then that was and one of his awesome. acceptance speeches at the BET. That was one of his acceptance speeches at one of the BET awards, I believe. He, he said, "You know, stay who you are, be be true to yourself." And at the time, I don't think that most people in the audience really got what he was trying to get at. But you know, he was really trying to wake it up and mm -hmm. tell people, you know, being who you are, stay who you are, is it, the is the key. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think that's the key anymore. I think that if you want to be in the game, you gotta have to have a little bit more skills. Then would you you can't just be a rapper and think that you're gonna make it in this game forever. I think another rapper is eventually gonna come around, catch some 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 type of viral win, and you could be off in the sunset. Staying on top of your 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 toes is very important in the industry these days. Okay. I think, I think the key to that is just knowing how to evolve within the industry. Like if you know how to evolve, then you create endless endless possibilities of longevity but what what would we consider evolving selling out because evolving is not staying true to self and this is a question for everybody so i, I'm not just you know, i don't story. think i don't think evolving is considered is considered selling out i think it's a it's, i think it's a show as a form of growth at the end of the day like because yeah. like you said because you said like to a certain degree you can't come in like give you a prime example LL Kuja. Hello, Kuja came came in rapping the way he rapped, and he still tried to do it in 2020, and it just didn't hit the way it hit back in the 80s. So you're you're not changing with the times, but at the same time, if you stuck in your style, it doesn't really. And then like even Cassidy, like even as a battle rapper, like he still rapped like he 2006 at the end of the day. So it really does. So you do have to evolve as opposing and and grow with the culture as opposing to being stuck in your ways. Do I consider it selling out? Not really. Well, I can't even say not really. No, I don't consider it selling out. Okay. Mm -hmm. We all. I mean, I agree with you. 
But I can kind of see what you're talking about, uh, Aaron, because the baby is a big example. Because he's not changing his, you know, his way of rapping, it's, it's, it all now sounds repetitive. And now people are looking at that as a defect. So... I mean, the baby's a bad. The baby's a bad example because I think all his uh, shenanigans and all his headliners and newspapers and articles and blogs is the reason why people are not subscribing to the baby no more. The baby could put out awesome music, but I just think he just he put his foot in his mouth so far now that I don't think people are subscribing to him for just the things, the shenanigans he's done outside of the music industry. I mean, I do agree with that, but like when you do, when people do still speak of his music, though, like even when he releases something, it's literally always the same thing of just, oh, he is, it's the same shit. He hasn't changed. Nothing has evolved. It's the same. So maybe it just depends on the person. Evolving is not sick. selling out. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, please talk. No, no, no. Evolving is not selling out because evolving is making yourself better than what you was before. It is not the same thing. It's not that you're conforming to what's going on, but you're widening yourself to to brighten what you're doing so that you can even create an even bigger fan base or whatever the case may be. When you sell out is doing exactly what they want you to do, even though you go against it. That's the difference between evolving and selling out, in my opinion. So how many people really sold out then? It's a lot of people that sold out. Little Nas X is one of them. Well, well, okay, <laughs> okay. This is where I grab control. And can we go to the comments real quick because we just spent enough time on this question. So I mean, it's a good, uh, it's good shit to talk about. But let's go to the, let's go to the comments real quick. We got to. Johnny says Snoop Dogg. That would be referring to the first question. Uh, May Love said, but people change, styles change, people outgrow things. Not all of us like everything we once used to. So how do we know it was a sellout and not genuine? Thank you. It's a good mm -hmm. question. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why it's not you. genuine when it's something that's not benefiting you for the long run of something that you feel is good for you. In my opinion. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we got a mm -hmm. oh, uh, pain is in the building. Uh, pain is in the what building. Pain? What up, pain? He said Ron Isley is a perfect example of not having to change up anything to keep up. With the times he collaborate with different artists, but his vocals and his style of artistry remains the same. Uh, he hasn't had to sell out to making vulgar and raunchy music in order that they have a name in today's music. At the same time, his music is definitely geared toward older fans. Um, I would not say it's geared towards older fans because his new music has a lot of new of these young artists. So I wouldn't say that, but you're good. Johnny said Snoop Lion. Hmm. Was that pun intended? Please. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, what music artist had the biggest impact on your life? What music artist had the biggest impact on your life? Hmm. Um. Shit. It's deep because you know how you got the gospel side of you, then you got this other side of you that come out. So it's a couple of artists that impacted your life in a way. Or is it just me? Whatever. Like, I mean, no. you can say the gospel right, side of you, and then you can say the gospel side of you impacted you, then the rap, the R&B, whatever. Make like, me you know, never mind. Um... Mm. Well, since somebody else is talking, um, my dad was a huge Starlights fan, so I, I, I um, I think the music that impact us or that may that might impact us, like like the professor just said, was music that you might have grown up on that your parents might have listened to. My mom was a huge Kirk Franklin fan. If you want to throw in my uh my gospel root, so mixing the two between you know the uh singing the girls' draws off Shy Lights and uh gp are you with me and the church ain't going nowhere uh kurt franklin i, I think those are probably about the two is uh what you're looking for you know the two that kind of impact my life the most on my upbringing i want to say kurt franklin was a good one my mom played a lot of them um smoky yeah, normal um 
Oh, I need you now. Yeah, uh, Fred Hammett, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, we grew up with a lot of that music, but then it also was like the blues side too. Cause I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> my family, like y'all ever was that kid that went to that party where y'all had to stay in that room? So all yeah. you just hear the music. Yeah. <laughs> and they only took you outside if they wanted like the kids to have a dance contest. Annoying. Yeah, the hole in the wall and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, to me, I, I can't put it down to one artist, but I will say that for me, it was gospel, blues, and R&B. Okay. Well, if I had to say one one artist, music art, musical artist that, that impacted my life, like for real, <sighs> MC Hammer. Yeah, I said it, MC Hammer. Like as a child, that was my idol. I used to, I used to, I used to dress like him, dance like him, and the whole nine. So, but, but as I start to get older and the feel of myself, I mean, of course, I kind of scale back on trying to be like somebody and just became myself. But highly influenced music, MC Hammer. Yeah. That would be that would be my. And don't get me wrong, I I listen to Kirk Franklin. I just don't believe that was gospel he was singing, but that's my that's my opinion. But to each his own. Uh, older Kirk, the 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 older of the Kirk Franklin, the, the, that yes, this newer Kirk Franklin, not so much. Yeah, no. I know because I, I, I'm from you, heaven. I, I, I was on I was on shade room. I was on shade room. I think they stopped the whole concert because he cursed. I was like, <laughs> like, put your fucking hands up for Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord, I, I mean, cannot. Not I um, I I'm gonna cannot. say for me, it's it's Lincoln Park. Hmm. Like I'm dead ass. Like I've actually I'm recently laughing, relax. I'm to, <laughs> I've actually recently listened to like some of the songs, and it's like it's one thing when you were listening to it as a teenager. But being grown and listening and going back and listening to some of those lyrics, it's like it resonates like so much deeper. And then it also gives you a peek into like what was going on in Chester's head. And it actually makes you kind of sad now when you go back to listen to the music because it's like he was telling you, he, he was telling you bits and bits. Did but, they do numb? Who did numb? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that numb. was Lincoln Park. Okay. That was Lincoln Park. But yeah, definitely Lincoln Park. Oh shit, that made me think too. Pink. Pink was definitely one of Ooh, them. Oh yes. Oh. Pink was definitely one of oh. them. That teenage years for sure. Yeah. If I if I could have if I could pick one, I would have to go with the I gotta go with Boney James for this one. Because Ooh, nice. because it's the way he paints not only the song, but with with the saxophone melody. But you can actually feel it. You can actually understand, like, whether you're happy, or whether you're sad. You can actually relate to. It, it. tells a story. Yeah. Well, what music supposed Did to? You over here deep and shit. What's the whole point? Hey, 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 yo, hey, yo, <laughs> Boney James is nothing to play with. Hey, 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 blame my dad for getting me hooked on Boney James. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We used to listen to the wave and everything every morning. Don't do that. I definitely oh, listen to Bonnie oh, James. Oh, definitely oh, he definitely oh, played that nonstop. <laughs> Facts. But um, with that being said, can we get to the comments? Uh, Johnny said, oh, no, I read that one already. I'm sorry. Um, Gio said, what up, Gio? He in the building. Gio, what's Gio, the deal, what's bro? Happening? Happy you here he with said, us, bro. Uh, Lincoln Park and DMX. DMX. Which I'm you didn't say that, Jay. Most um, rest in peace. Kane said, "Salute rest Lincoln Park." He also said, "Salute Lincoln Park." I feel that. He has to say it twice, so you know it's real. No, <laughs> no, no, no. He, he felt I it. think I honestly I think numb was one of my favorite songs from Lincoln Park. Heaven, mm -hmm. numb was one of my favorite songs from Lincoln Park because it it resonated with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. mine was definitely somewhere I belong. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was nice. Yeah. All right, y'all. To the next question, how do you think the music of today would have survived in the music industry back in the day? The music of today, how do you think it would have survived back in the day? Do you think it would have survived rather more? 
think about that. I would flip that and I would say the music back then probably wouldn't have survived today if it was based on the same things because of some of the lyrics of certain things mm-hmm. that That's nowadays that. people are so sensitive. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that but the music of today yeah. would definitely yeah, I, mean, I made a post about that in the group. In a in the music of today would definitely somewhat survive. It would somewhat survive depending on. No, let me just say that some of the music, not all, but some of the music probably would have survived. And I'm talking about not even the rap. I'm talking about this new culture of R&B that's coming out. I think that would have survived. So you're saying saying the culture would survive back in the day? It just wouldn't survive? I don't think the rap culture would have survived. Okay, I get that. I, I agree. I don't think and, it was. And, the, and the only reason why I say that is because some of these new artists who rap don't rap about nothing. There's no substance in nothing. Music back then, there was a lot of substance to it, and it made sense. I agree. I agree. It was and very I mean. little hip hop that talked about no, like little to nothing. Exactly. And not to mention, I think back in the day, lyrics were a part of the game. Like being able to rap was definitely a part of the game. Now it's kind of mm-hmm. like you get yourself a you get yourself a high beat and talk about the drugs you drinking or snorting or whatever it is, and put it to a dope beat. These kids, you know, a lot of people think it's cool, myself included, sometimes. So, do I think that it would have survived? Probably not, because like i mean as far as rap culture i think the other cultures probably could have i mean but even even i can't even say the r&b culture because like i said back in the day it was more sexual innuendo it was kind of like we know what they're talking about but they're not saying it but now it's more along the lines of boom this is what uh-uh. it is uh-uh i wouldn't don't say that. Up, don't do that i'm not even saying that i'm not just saying just that song but it's hey, like go, a lot hey, of hey, songs hey, hey, hey. It's a lot of songs that were very sexual that told you just exactly what it was from back in the day. And I'm talking about some old raunchy ass back in the day. I what the chick said, I want you to lick my pussy and all this and that. And that was an old ass song. Is it we see, but we had code for it because I mean, come on now, that's exactly no, what no, it, that's no, 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 no. This about. lady specifically said, I Oh, want you to lick my pussy. Okay. And oh, I know what you're talking about. Exactly. You're talking about Millie, you're talking about Millie Jackson. No, not Millie Jackson. No, I think it's older than that. It's way, way older. older than that. It's when it was, um, put the record play on. It was vulgar back then, and I then it kind of died on. down to where they actually had uh, other words besides using the actual word for things. And then I think as time progressed, it just got back to being very vulgar. Okay. But I also okay. think with R&B, it, probably the R&B nowadays wouldn't have survived back then because Let's be real, especially in the 90s, the 80s and the 90s, voices were more of value. And as much as I love, you know, the progressive R&B right now, voices are not of value anymore. They, they really aren't. So a lot of the artists, I feel like because they would not have singing ability, it would not survive. I would then. say half because you got your Alex Isley and her voice is phenomenal. And yeah, she like, made. so that's what I would say. Not necessarily all I would say half of the R and B, but so the other ones, it's like no, you you wouldn't make it back then. I would say like you have to look at it from what's being glamorized, what's being pushed out there today, versus what's be, what was being pushed out back in the day, because there's not. Because you look over, you look over the social media platforms, like you see stuff being glamorized, like over sexualized, and people doing the doing the whole drug perspective. You don't hear anything about raw, authentic emotion, and it makes it difficult. It makes it difficult for us to understand what the artist is, what the artist is saying and going through. If if you if you're basically speaking about oh the over the over um what was it over glamorized stuff 
We'll see. You have a leg. It's on you. I think it all will survive because I think we make lanes for things of today. Of today, so back in the day we called it R and B. We grow, we grew up, and now we all of a sudden we call it neo soul. That that's now a whole new lane that we cannot consider R and B no more. Is it still R and B music? Of course, but now we're gonna put this in a whole other category and call it neo soul. So, what neo soul can we compare to now versus then? We can't because they're in the category by themselves now. What rap music outside of the eight? We could say rap was created when in the early in the in the eighties, maybe in the early eighties, maybe depending on what coast you want to claim, West Coast or East Coast. I mean, Big Daddy Kane, Eric. Nineteen seventies, early eighties. I might say yeah, like early, like late seventies, early eighties. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know if Big Daddy Kane would age very well nowadays, opposed to what rappers are rapping about now. I, I I feel like we kind of showing our age, and we sound like our parents when we were growing up. Like, yeah, this was this is the shit, and we look at them like, nah, this ain't the shit. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm not knocking anybody for you know. I, I just feel like we nowadays we make lanes for people to be successful, in, and it's and it's really unfair to compare the, the the different genres of music versus old versus new. But I think a lot of them would survive, honestly. Okay. Okay. With that. Being said, can we see what the people are talking about in the comments real quick? Okay. Uh, Payne said the mumble rap culture would not survive back in the day. Uh, Jill said it would not have existed because music always caters to the, the time and the culture. Nova is in the building, y'all. What up, Nova? Hey, Nova. How you be? How you be? How you be? <laughs> All right. Let's get to the next question. Um, what are your thoughts on artists not owning their masters? I feel like them not owning their masters, they're missing out on a lot of money, but just um, owning something that you can potentially have that you can pass down through generations with your, your children so that you know they do have money there. I, I, I think they should own their masters. In my opinion, that's just mine. You know, we're shape or form. Like I, anybody else. I I agree, but at the same time, it really depends because um, I'm not saying every artist, but some people like I can't think of I can't think of an artist who just sold it. I think it was Justin Bieber. I'm not sure, but he sold no. Well, anyway, whoever it was, they just sold their masters for like 200 million. Well, well, okay, but here's the thing. That's great because he owned it to sell it, right? So he made a profit off of it. Okay, true, mm -hmm. truth be told, but I mean, okay, so you're basically uh, implicating that the fact that they didn't own a master from the time that they started is what you're saying. It's not even about owning it from the time they started, but it's acquiring it because at the end of the day, if you was a person who had real good music and you own your masters and you know people would want to sample that, if you have a family, if you have children, that is creating longevity of money that can help your kids, even though you might have extra or whatever the case may be. Because even for a sample, they pay good money to use a sample. And then some people have it where they own a master's. You can sample this for only X amount of time. Now it's mine again and you can't use it no more. T mm. Time out, though. Do you, do you think people purposely don't own a master's, though? I, I don't know if they oh. don't purposely own a master or some of them just can't afford to own a master's. Okay, but, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said that. But if you can afford to own your master's or at least try to acquire it, even if it's not in the beginning, but when you start making money where you can start owning your master's, even if it takes you time, okay, let me own this one, then let me own that one, then do so. It's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would prefer to own their master's, but I think a lot of people come from poverty a lot of people can't afford to put in the investments to even own masters out the gate. A lot of times, mm -hmm. you hear that's why I said it doesn't have to be out the gate. But, but, but sometimes, I mean, I hear what you. I hear what you're saying. I just saying like you know, I, I just feel like the deals that people sign will take the first deal smoking because we come from poverty. We don't come from 
we don't come from money. Uh, so to get myself out the hood, to be able to put my mom in a better neighborhood, buy her a nice house, to, to, to make sure my family is set up, I'm not going to be able to, not, 90% of people are not going to be able to afford their masks. And, 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 and that's that's true. But and if I, you can afford it, or if you make money over time, try to acquire your masters is all I'm saying. But, but just, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jack. No, continue. Continue. Don't want you to mm-hmm. get your, your thoughts. No, I was just going to say that nowadays, I understand what Aaron is saying because these are the reasons why a lot of the older artists ended up in the deals that they did because it was just the thought of, okay, well, I'm getting out, you know, I made it, you know, I'm assigned whatever is here because it's my only deal or it's my only way, you know, my ticket to the top. But nowadays it has changed where artists are looking into that first because they do have a better understanding of how the industry can be if you're first coming into it. Like it's a fucking machine, it'll eat you alive. Um, So I think everybody is pretty much correct when it comes down to this subject um, because it's it's different. It's it's different things that can affect that. And that's what I'm saying. You don't have to own it out the gate. But if at any time you're watching your masters and you got the money to acquire it, acquire it. Because at the end of the day, you can make money purely off of samples. I, I think I, I think everyone in, in their right mind would want to own their masters. And I, I I don't think sometimes masters are if not achievable. If you created the music, if you created that music, yes. I don't I think you, I don't that. Masters uh, said he don't want to own his masters. So everybody don't. But, well, but however, but however, though, this is the thing. And this is what I was getting to when I said it about the person who sold their masters for 200 million some people are not being sampled some people are not even probably even getting money off get they're, they're not how should i say uh buying getting shit bought off itunes or spotify or anything like that they're not receiving any money so if so, if a company comes to you with a large sum of money to give to give you and it's a possibility that because like I said, 200 million, that's generational wealth. If you really, if you really want to be honest. But that so, means they own their masters and sold it. So that's good though. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying. But like I said, but that I just don't see that they're getting the the residuals that an artist like uh Ron Isley has or like an artist like Prince would have if I mean they look at it. Chris right now. You, there's a reason why this motherfucker keeps releasing 40 track albums because I mean, he owns his own if, shit. If you want to go back and look at your answer about, about who you would take advice from, Michael J- Michael J didn't even own his own masters. He was trying to obtain his masters in the time he of his compromise. But the funny part is, I find that interesting though because he, you know, what's crazy about that. He was owning other people's masters. He had the masters of the Beatles. Like that's, that's what I was about to say. So technically, he didn't even need to own his masters because he owned BME. He owned Sony at that at the time he was alive. Like but he owned not, the Beatles at one point. So conversation it's just, the everybody's proving the point. Nah, I don't want to. I'm not going right. to lie. You can do it. You're absolutely right. But I, I, at the end of the day, I'm just Perfect. saying, Perfect. Ma- Perfect. I think the masters is not attainable for everybody, in my opinion. No matter how much it's, money I mean, you make, it's not. But, I'm, it, I, I, it's not. but everybody just proved what I said. Owning a master means generational wealth. We, we, all agree, we, all can agree, we all can agree to that statement, but I, I just I don't ever see TLC owning their masters. <laughs> I'm sorry. But this is why I said that <sighs> everything is all. Everybody is correct because it's a lot of different components when it comes down to why people do and do not own their masters like we all you know pointed out things and they all still fall under the same sorry the word again conglomerate <laughs> it does we're still waiting for the page in the dictionary but yeah, we're, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still waiting for the i believe it's right before like congress five, so you were saying at the last five shows. it all falls under the anything. same umbrella basically uh, whatever anyway but can we since, since we talk about masters can we master the comments please yes Chris has said the technology we have now allows for labels to not be so necessary and as such holding the masters as collateral is not a tactic label can use anymore. Mm. Um, Payne said artists that do music for the love and fans don't care about owning their masters in my opinion. 
Okay. Geo said, owning your mastery is half the battle. Owning your publishing is the best half of the battle. Most of the older artists were and are ill-informed about the value of their creativity, which is right. And that's why Ryan Isley did what he did, and now he owns what he owns. Moving Talk on. Talk Mama shit, is in the building, and she said, hey, Mama, my Mama, 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 Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. She said, hey, my love, just checking in, saying hello, and I miss you guys. We miss you. And, and we Enjoy miss you more, Mama Cookie. Enjoy your anniversary. Indeed. All right. Question. All right, let's get to it. What song have you heard that was remade that you never thought you needed? Basically, what song that was remade and you heard it and you felt it didn't really need to be remade at that point? So, Return of the Mac. <laughs> That's fucked up. I don't know why. Uh, who who touched that? What's his name? Chris and somebody else. G G G Easy oh, and Chris G-Eazy. Brown. G Easy and Chris Brown. Damn. Damn that you didn't need to though. They As Alex Isley, we are one. She did that shit, and that was a perfect remake for me. Oh wait, the oh, question was what's the perfect remake or something that they shouldn't have touched? No, no should have that they, they, they basically what's a remix that you heard that you didn't know you need. So then I'm oh, gonna go with I, the I, I, I take my answer back then. I'm sorry. I had it the other way around. I'm, I'm gonna go with Joe's can't get over you. Like he sound very smooth on that on that remake. Yeah. Um, a remix that I did. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say Big Rich Town with Trey Songs. Then, oh, then you trolling for real, nigga. <laughs> Seriously. Charlie Wilson, let's chill. That shit was hard. That Charlie was Wilson, hard. let's chill. Oh my god. Every time they come on, I turn the radio up. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, that I needed though. Shit. Uh, still in love by Warren G. Mm. I'm gonna say that still in love by Warren G. That's my shit. Okay, he did, he, he did, he did that. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I gotta, if I have to pick one, I have to go with uh, Lloyd's uh, Slow Wine. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Eric? We go to the comments. We good. I picked something now. Well, 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 well. Mama Cookie <laughs> said, thank you. Pain said, "Damn, double A." My bad, Pay. I, I heard the question wrong. I'm sorry. Mama Cookie said, "Good night. I'm on my date with hubby." Have fun. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Pain said, "I love the remake don't. of Make Me Say It Again, Ron and Beyonce. It's beautiful. Yes, it is." Mm. And Gio said, "Love Train, Silk Sonic." You are absolutely right, Gio. And I almost forgot about that shit. Were you about mm. to choke him? That shit is <laughs> air choke him. It had mm. a choke hold. <laughs> Damn, Joe. <Gio! laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Oh wait, we got. All one. right, hold on. Eli said, "Lucky Day version of music to love." Yes. Oh shit. I that's, the bait, that's debatable though. That's debatable. <laughs> that's debatable. That's debatable. <laughs> that's debatable. That's debatable. That's debatable. Although Music Soul Town brought like, Lucky Day out in, in the versus battle, so Lucky Day can do his version of it. I feel like that. Are we talking about love or over? Because over is what he said. Love, right? Because over is what uh, sampled have crazy. So I'm like, wait, wait, did he do a cover of Love? <laughs> I think he did, though. Damn. I can't remember. I listen but Lucky Day did uh, Heartbreak Hotel, too. Wasn't that Lucky Day? Oh. Mm. He did his cover of Heartbreak one more, Hotel. 
Went, I'm about to look went, into that. Went, I know he did definitely did a song for you. Before we before we uh get on to the next question, I'm gonna say killing me softly by the by the Fuji's. <laughs> You know what? You are absolutely right. We're, we're not allowed to mention the Fuji's on nowhere on the show. It takes a prod, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Heather, we don't. Anyway, he did do Heartbreak Hotel. Look it up. Okay, I'm gonna let the listen to that. That 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 one is one of my favorites too. All right. So why do you think these record labels are so quick to sign an artist and then shelf them? Why do you think labels are quick to sign an artist then shelf them? Selfish reasons. I feel Very like they see somebody that's hot and they want to keep them, but right now is not the time to push them. And then when the right opportunity comes, then they can push them. But as long as they had them signed, they can't put out no music. They can't do nothing with nobody else. So they keep them until it's that right time. But they get them while they know that this person is great and they know they're going to make great music but right now is just not the time to push their music the way they want to when is the right time you're absolutely right which is considered selfish which is what they which is considered I mean, selfish. It is selfish, but, selfish. you know sometimes they're like okay well we got this artist who we just put out and we're pushing them and i know you'll be here too but i don't want you really just going toe to toe with them right now so we're gonna shelf you for a minute Let's get them out, and then we're going to push you next. But I feel like some people get shelved, and um, when they do get put out, they don't have that same effect that when they first dropped their first album. Yeah, the high, you know, high, high, high down. Like, you know why? Example, LMA. I think Mustard kind of shelved her too long and let her kind of sit. Although her next, her second album was nice, I feel like she kind of she kind of left that the boot up. Okay. In or the summer, that momentum. three years this is, ago. This is, this is why I say they do that. With the artists of what you're saying, Erin, this this is just my personal opinion. The reason why the longevity or it's not as big as it was how they were before is because at this point now they're like, I'm shelved, I can't do anything, I'm just stuck here. Instead of just keep creating and keep creating and keep wanting to push and push and push, so they keep that same energy. At that point, their energy, their momentum is gone. So it's just kind of it is what it is instead of still being like you know i know i'm going to do this one day and keep pushing and pushing and pushing eventually some people just get tired so no it's not the same once they finally get pushed I but i think I it's i'm sorry i just want to get to continue started. i really honestly think also they just want to show that they have specific artists on the roster like i don't know if you anybody you saw the drink champs for t-pain but when he talked about it, about him being on RCA, um, he basically said, I would like you're not doing anything with me. I would gladly be happy if you just release me. And they literally told him, like, you like your T Pain, you think I'm gonna release you off of the no. Nah. Like they literally just will have you just for the sake of showing you on their roster, and that's it. That and so no one else can pick you up. Again, yeah. going back to me, it's that, probably, that's 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 being selfish. It's so, yeah, it's just selfish ass racism yeah, no matter yeah. what. Yeah, I mean, I agree with the with the selfish part of it because I think personally, when a person gets signed and they get, get quick as shell, I think like like everybody has obviously said like sometimes it's not the right time, and then sometimes they they might not uh how should I say conform to a look or sound that is popular at the particular time, so they feel that they're not gonna make any money off of it, so that's why they'll probably be like, nah, we're not gonna do that, or and other reasons, they may sign a hotter artist than that person and then just put them out beforehand. Because like I say, like when Death Row, Snoop's album was supposed to come out before All Eyes on Me, but because Tupac had just gotten out of jail and he was considered like, oh, what is he talking? What is he going to talk about? What is he going to say? And this, that, and the third, since he has all this uh, controversy behind him, we're going to put his album out first. And Dogfather got shelved. So then when it did come out after Tupac died, it didn't hit. So I just so that's why I kind of agree with the selfish aspect of what the industry or company record companies would shelf you for. And not to mention if you're not even trying to push yourself and showing them that look, this is what I want. 
that's shit for you too. Because at the end of the day, like you said, selfish reason, we got you. You went, you can't go nowhere. So I'll, I'll pull you out when I'm ready. I, I think the artist can shelf himself as well. I mean, I, I, we saw Lil Wayne shelf himself from Baby, and we saw him when he finally did drop that project. Yeah, but that's today's that's today's aspect though. Like, because everybody was very, very much so. Wayne. I'm just saying, like, if, if if you do have that 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 power, or if you do have that name, you yeah, can't. I mean, you know, but I, I, think, I think back yeah. in the day, like I think back in the day, like or even not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even just gonna say back in the day because, like you just said, LMA. I just think she lost momentum and. But like, time. I think that's still kind of bad to say because her her album wasn't trash. She still had a no. Great it's album. not trash. No, no, it's not you trash. Have, when you lose, okay. You know how an artist is only as good as how they push themselves. You can have a million motherfuckers around you pushing you, right? But if you don't believe in yourself and push yourself as hard as the other artists do. I don't think that was the case with LMA though. I just, I just, she- I just think, I just think personally when, when, when she re-released, um, what's that song, Boo? I think that's how you say it, um, My Boo or whatever it's called. But yeah. when, when, what song she- you talking about? I think he meant Boot Up. Right. Boot, yeah, that Boot, boot up. up, whatever the fuck it's called. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, when that came out, she should have, you know, released at that point because it was hot it was like in the club she, it was everywhere she, she did and i do release. agree I, she, I, did, I, she did she did, she did release. Then, i mean but that's what i'm saying like but that's what i'm saying like and then like i said strike while the irons is why why the iron is hot because we know she had more music but mustard pushed it back and like i said while that summer that my um booed up was 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 hitting she should have just been releasing and releasing and release and release but, but they her, and then she lost momentum she lost that steam so when the next album that you say is good came out it was nothing behind it because people wasn't really checking for it no more because people were on to the next thing at this point but That's i don't even th- necessarily think that it was that either i don't think the label really was pushing the album like they were pushing the first one because i barely even knew about the single that had dropped so it, it wasn't out there as much. Like I don't really think it was a lot of push behind her for it. I don't even think it's that. I just think that she got a summer anthem and it and it flew off the shelves. The shit went viral. It definitely did, but her next song didn't go as hard as that one did. I also think like the whole. This is where I feel like EPs are kind of hurting uh, the artist as well because she had three whole EPs out before the album even dropped. And I think the same thing with her. Like she had all these EPs that were out, like most of the hottest shit was on those albums, or sorry, those EPs. So by the time the album rolled around, it was just kind of like, it just, like you said, lost momentum. It was, it just wasn't the same energy. Me, did you, did you give a, uh, a answer? Mm. No, no, I was gonna say that I think artists, become too comfortable because when they get comfortable and when they get comfortable they feel like oh they feel like oh they got this label got me okay cool i would just sit back but but they're not able to break out of their comfortability and just keep pushing themselves in my, so it in kind my of goes in line with what puts it yes sort of all right, can we go to the comments? I think Sir mm-hmm. Joseph got a, got a great point in the comments right now as well. So can we go to the comments real Jill quick? said, label shelf artists because artist development doesn't exist anymore. So the artist stays stagnant, among other things. Great point. I agree with that. There, there isn't artist development nowadays anymore. I mean, but it, it's a lot of stuff that back in the day that they don't do anymore with artists. Facts. Like... Because back in the day, like, you know, they, like I said before, they had to, you got to have a certain look. You had to have a certain, um, you know, a certain record for radio. And then, you know, you leave the shit, you know, you like for a rapper, you know, you leave your street shit for side B or whatever it is. So, yeah, it becomes artist development after a while. But then it, it now it's really not no artist development anymore. Do do I, I got a side question. Do you think that these music TV shows is the reason why a lot of the the artist development and stuff like that doesn't exist anymore? Well, because what's, of the transparency. What shows are you talking about in particular? So, you know, we have um 
you could give an example of a few. You don't have to name all of them out there, but I, I'm talking I, about the American Idols and America's Got Talent, or yeah, those, those yeah. making the band type shows like or, American Idol. Um, I think the hip hop factor, those, those type of shows, well, the, the, the the contest shows where you know you can get a, a deal, oh, not like loving hip hop and shit like that, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm not like loving hip hop or nothing like that. If, if you want to be real, that there is artist development in those shows because they're being trained one on one with these artists that actually hit a button, turn around, and decide I'm gonna work with you. So right, and then not to mention, and not to mention, out of all the a lot of them have win those shows. How many actually become artists? I don't I don't everybody who win American Idol at least get a, a, a contract for a one album? So we saw the Fantasia. Yeah, but I mean, we, we have we have certain people that have won. But what I'm saying is, though, do you think that a lot of times because a person has a great voice for one song that literally they're like, okay, I want this person. And then it's like they don't make it far because the that one song is what they've practiced all their whole time. Okay. my Okay. My, now, my, my only gripe with that is, is I think it is artist development, especially for, for shows like... Um, What's what's the one that we're talking about? Um, like the voice? America's Got Talent, or uh, the other one that was further back? Uh, American, Idol. American, Idol. American Idol. American Idol. Yeah, because you know you have to do challenges in order to get to the next round. So I'm just asking sense, the question. A, now. No, no, no. I'm not getting on you, but I'm just saying that I just think that's a form of artist development at the end of the day. For sure, because they have to do. They have multiple to be able to. Songs. Yeah, they have to do multiple, multiple songs and They have to. They have to do something inside the guidelines of what is asked of them in the week's time or whatever in in order to compete in the next round. For okay. sure. So I think yeah. that's a form yeah. of of artist development. I agree. Nowadays, I don't think it's it, is that because, like I said, everybody is so free and so able to do what they do, and then they don't need the. Uh, the, the machine behind them so yeah they just come out and be who they want but if you are signed i think yourself just because like i said going back to LMA again i just think she lost momentum she lost steam that's just what i think at the end of the day i said the same thing with that right. being said <laughs> let me get to these last two comments then you go to the next question yeah, um, exactly. geo said those shows does practice artist development and he also said absolutely right jay he agreed with you Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Anyway, this is the next to the next question. Why do you think one hit wonders are one hit wonders? Because there was a person that practiced Whoa. one song and sounded great on it, and they just didn't have the push. They wasn't even their music; they was just lip singing. Okay. Well, I think oh, one shit. hit wonders. I think one hit wonders are different from like I say it's a it's a it's a two-part answer. Like one hit wonders back in the day, I think personally that they had I, I honestly I think back in the day in music was how should I say it I mean is it I'm not gonna say it's just as free as it is now because I mean a lot of shit from back in the day was inside a lot of parameters and guidelines, but it was fun. It was like good music in a sense now. Nowadays, it's like, okay, are you 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 you're you're free to do what you want, but is it hot right now? And that's why I think a lot of one hit wonders happened back then, as opposed to now. Because, like I said, you you like I said, off the top of y'all heads, y'all can probably name three or four fucking um, one hit wonders from back in our era. You know, not saying our age, but Billy. as I'm sorry. The Millie Vanilli shit. You can go snow. You can say fucking uh dude who sing. I wish I was a little bit taller and all this other little shit. It's a it's a whole yeah. bunch of shit. I feel like a lot of when he you know, you're right here. Like, nice. like they were based in novelty. Like it was just something that was popular at the time, and it just so happened to catch on. Is Color Me Back considered a one hit wonder? Yes. 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 I want to set you. Up. I adore me more was the uh, number one song. Yeah, that was that was not you're not a one hit wonder, dude. They definitely not a one hit wonder. Okay, because I, I thought I ain't gonna lie, I thought that was uh all, all for one. I thought that's who that was, but okay, no, my bad. Totally bad. <laughs> there are two okay, hits. So 
there are two hit one. <laughs> right. I don't, think, I don't think anyone like goes into the 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 industry wanting to be a one hit wonder. I, I but maybe what I, I'm gonna just like leave that statement where it's at. I'm gonna now say that I think a lot of people we're gonna see a lot a lot more one hit wonders now than what you ever seen in your whole life because I just think that we live in a society that wants to go viral and wants to get a, a, a thousand views on TikTok or a million views on TikTok and it, it's fine with just instant success opposed to a longevity career. So I just feel like nowadays I'm, I'm we're probably gonna see a lot more one hit wonders now than anything else. Like people have gone viral off of dancing, off of dance moves. If we don't or, know who these people or, are, or however they're bringing songs back, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I, 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 I feel that. I feel that. Aaron, I was doing my my TikTok dance. I saw you. I didn't want to judge you, but uh, I hope you <laughs> listen. I, hope you I don't fine. know the damn dance, and I'm sitting down, so it ain't gonna work out the same. All, All right. right, what you got to say, Meech? Ah, uh, one one hit wonders. I think they. I think they exist, like, I think they became one hit wonders because of just mainly, it, it, it goes back to saying they become too comfortable with that one, with that one hit. Like they stay, like they stay with that one hit and then everything else is, everything else is not really slapping. I, I, I kind of I, find I that hard to leave though. That I don't I think Vanilla that. Ice is going to say Ice Ice Baby was going to be my only song that I practice the rest of my life. And I don't feel like. No, I, because he had Ninja Rap. I was about to say, Go Ninja Go was the shit. Go oh, Ninja, go, ninja go. Go, go, go. It was go. not the shit, you guys. That would not, that would not age <laughs> well today. That would not age well today, y'all. Hey, I don't give a shit. I, shit, I still do the dance with the turtle. I'm, all right, I stop. Can't. Facebook I can't can't <laughs> in his life. <laughs> We're not trying to get flagged. <laughs> All right, but since we got that, since we got one hit wonders out, can we go to the comments and see what they talking about? Payne said they was one hit wonders because cancel culture got to their ass. We just didn't know about it, so he's basically <laughs> saying we didn't know about cancel yeah, culture. culture back just in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. happened the last yeah. five years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> May, may hey, it probably was a different name back then, okay? That's why the one hit wonder now the cancel culture. I don't please know. Please tell me why I'm Eminem haven't been can, please can tell me why Eminem never been canceled then. I'll wait. Oh, let's not get to that. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm you're not gonna hey, screw me. Uh, may said all for one album was fire. It was Gio said artists were able to eat off that one hit for a long time <laughs> until they true. found out that yeah. joke singing. That is uh, on that one hit. Pain said, "Shit, I love uh, Go Ninja Go." We know Pain. We know. <laughs> oh shit! I fucked up. I'm not being funny. I'm just saying we know. Go ahead. Do we have any other questions that we want to get to before this night's over with? Uh, sure. Um. Oh, uh, we got about. Had... We got some time. We got a lot yeah, of we questions. got a little time. But how has this music era impacted generation of kids today? Hmm. Not good, y'all. Not That's good at all. Question. The children just don't know that they are uh, these. A lot of these, some not some of these artists who rap about a lot of things absolutely don't do half the shit that they do that these kids are so influenced by. Okay. And, and and the fact that they're so influenced by it is scary. Just gonna be honest with you. I mean, have we always been influenced especially by music, good. though? Say it again, Aaron. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Have we always been influenced by music? Yes, but what I'm saying is the 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 stuff that they talk about in the music now is so influential to these kids. You know, the drugs, the sex, the money, and all that. And the thing is, a lot of these artists don't do half of the shit that they talk about. And then with the music nowadays, a lot of these artists are so dumb that they're putting the shit that they did. And this music, and this is the reason why they're getting caught up in the situations they're getting caught up in. And that should teach these kids the fucking lessons as well. But I'm just saying. But I just think that these kids are so into going viral that they don't give a shit about what's what at this point. So like like, like the professor just said, like you got kids who basically want to become junkies because they heard Future say it. 
or because they heard the Migo say it or whatever it is. Like, you know what I mean? And they don't take the right bits and pieces from the music and be like, okay, this person, they, they feel, oh, this person is living the life I want to live. So I have to do these things in order to get to their status per se. And, and honestly, it's completely wrong. And that's why I don't really dig this music too much. I mean, yeah, I listen to it and all that shit, but that doesn't mean that I comply with everything they're doing at the end and of the day. They're definitely not learning because so, if they learn, seeing that these artists are being caught up for the shit that they send in their music you would think would help them learn and understand but it's not so you know the music definitely impacts then, these kids in, in, in a negative way and then not to mention we were smart enough to know like if we was to see an interview you'd be we'd be like oh this motherfucker's stupid so i know i can't listen to this like i know i can't listen to everything he's talking about as far i mean yeah it's cool to enjoy it at a party or to listen to it but i know i can't repeat what he's doing because he's dumb as a box of rocks it's not like he don't even have um higher than a fifth grade reading level so it's kind of like go ahead heather because i'm sorry no finish finish what you're saying Gerald. no i'm good go ahead Y'all on one tonight, man. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say that I completely agree with both of you guys, but the glimmer of hope, at least what I've witnessed and seen on TikTok, is a lot of that same generation, they're going past what they're being fed to, and they're going backwards. So they still do, there's they're still a good chunk that has an appreciation for the music that we grew up on that actually conveys, you know, positive messages. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not losing complete hope just because of that little glimmer of light. Every generation okay. has has lost lost artists and, and has lost a, uh, a group of people. Uh, you can take it back to when our parents was coming up, to when we was coming up, to now the kids is coming up. Is it at an all-time bad now? By all means, but if you want to be real about it, we grew up in an era when we were saying "fuck the police." Like now, how much how much sense did that make? And at the time, our parents could have said, "Y'all niggas is very lost to say to be walking around in the street where black men." Hold on, because <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it still today. is for today. <laughs> I'm sorry, but but I, I get what you're saying. But for today. It, it very much does. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, like. You, if you, if you really want to do the history, I think there was music that our parents listened to that was very much lost music, and, and, they, and those artists influenced our parents. There was music that we listened to growing up, and there was artists that was lost that kind of like made people in, around us be lost as well. And today, again, my point was today these kids at all time high or even lost even more. And you're, and you're correct, but I, fuck the police I, I was around the time. Okay, like I said, it's, it's not a bad example. I, I, I but I agree though, because like I said, I mean, because you got to look at the way music, uh, like music growth would from our parents to us to, to no, and to I now. definitely it's agree like, with that. I was just only stating that. Fucking that's why I said I agree rap. because, like I said, most of our parents they listen, they did, they weren't listening to rap. Everything was Al Green, Temptations, uh, uh, Shy Lights, like you said. But, but, uh, okay, you can, you can, you can say, you can say that, but a lot of that music okay, was talking about, Millie, you, was, you, was talking you, about getting yeah, drunk and high and doing drugs. You had certain parents that was listening to Millie. You had certain parents that was, and then when it got to us, it became the chronic. It was like, oh fuck, bitches, and all this other little shit. And smoke weed and this that, and the third, and that's where the, 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 the quote unquote bad influence came from. And then as you get older, now it's oh yeah, I'm sipping lean and doing this and I taking mean, Percocets it, and it, blah, it, blah, blah. It, it's, it's just now it's, it's just it's blunt now. We we went from juicy fruit and and, and at the end of the day we didn't, didn't talk about bubble gum back then. They didn't give a damn about no like they talked about drugs on a different level back in the day. That's like, true. Our end, the Enduendos was there. It just wasn't. Ours is just, it just, that's it why just I said it's going to get more fun back in a couple questions ago. I said in your windows back I mean, in a couple questions ago. Niggas is talking about sipping on some scissor. Really. You're not going to sit here and say you just straight sipping on cough syrup. I don't like, understand why they were sipping on that shit. They gave me that for COVID. When I was coughing and I didn't like that shit. Yeah. But like I say, I guess we can all agree that 
today's music is at all, you know, today's generation is at all time. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a form of us showing our age. I mean, I, I think that's what it is. We yeah, I mean, it's like a twin got there. Yeah, not old. It's it's exactly what I'm saying. Because I'm not old. I'm age like fine Why Don't do that. Which is the same <laughs> thing, <laughs> old. <laughs> I'm not you old. I'm Aaron, go to the corner. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> gladly. I'll be the better place to gladly. Of course, the end of the show, you go to the corner. Aaron. That's right. But, 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 but why Aaron is kicking it into the corner? Now. Yes. Watch Aaron is on this timeout. Why Aaron is on this timeout? We're going to go to the comments. <laughs> Get off your phone, Aaron. Come back. You're not in the corner no more. You're in the corner. Mind your business. <laughs> You're not in the corner no more. Mind your business. Gio said, there's no feeling in the music this generation is listening to. The music only touched mm. their ears and eyes and not their souls and hearts. He also said, I have too many nieces and nephews. We talk about it all the time. They don't feel the music. Payne said, I feel like you have to be a really, really weak-minded person to hear a song and form your life or motives around it. Like your mental fortitude is not strong enough to handle reality, so you're just a follower and a slave to someone else's version of life through song. Hold on, before anybody say something, let me respond to this question. If you are kids nowadays who grow up where the parent is too busy to help or to help uh, teach them or everything is i i am on my um device of of whatever it is these kids whatever they can resonate to because the parent is not there to teach them different doesn't mean that they're, they're weak-minded they just don't know because they wasn't taught I that's agree. just my opinion and, because i'm about and, to say because and then and then you can't really call a child who weak minded parent is out there living who whose parent is out there living their best life and not really even being a parent they just have kids just because they slipped up that night or whatever that part weak minded so i i disagree to a most, degree, but partially but partially agree i disagree right to a degree most, i agree partially. But at the parts of the statement, not all. But, but a lot of it, I disagree because you can't really call kids weak minded per se because they only know what they see on these platforms. Kids are very influential, and, like, and if just, you don't have the right people, it, you know that's that's the whole saying. It takes a village to raise a child. If you don't have the right villagers to help you raise that child, <sighs> they're gonna be lost in the sauce. Uh, he said, my, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be saying, but um, child can't. But the question didn't specify children or adults, adults do the same thing as children nowadays. So, my answer is valid in my opinion. Uh, Jerry, read that question again, okay? Um, mm. now I gotta find it, okay. How has the music era impacted the generation <laughs> of kids today? It was specified. It's not valid. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> we're not, we not doing that. Yeah, we're not going to do that. The but, point but, is, but, but, no, no, but, no, no, however, no, no. But, however, and, and no, no, the no. reason why I said what I said is because I wouldn't even take it that far, but before, but he said it didn't specify children or adults. I'm letting you okay, know. Okay, but, like but, but like oh. I said, I agree. I, yeah, agree. I agree I with agree you, with but I agree too because, like I said, there are a lot of parents who don't want to be parents, they want to be you know, have hot girl summers in, instead of being moms or whatever. So, they out here doing what they see on these platforms and in exactly. these music, what, these, these music songs because videos are not really valid anymore. But, and that's what I, I, agree, I agree to that aspect. Though. I definitely and and I, and I so. didn't agree with him, but I would just want to let him know that we did specify. It's all I know. You're, you're absolutely right, but that's, that's what true. I want to say that at and, the end of the it, day, it is based upon the parent of that child to withstill what is right and what is wrong within that child and what and people it, get. But fuck it. And what people get fucked up sometimes is that that for some reason falls upon the actors, singers, whoever it is to raise their children. So at the end of the day, no matter what, it starts at home, period. It definitely does. But when the children don't have that support from the parent, 
that's where it goes to that's, that's where it goes. And that's, and that's why I said it has a really should raise a child. Exactly. And I agree with you. I completely agree. Let me read this last statement before we get to another question. He said, okay. plus we all heard the same music growing up. Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, E-40, Ice Cube, um, Dog Dog Pound, West Coast, East Coast, gangster shit. And none of us on here today decided to go and grab a gun and kill people and do cocaine. But that's because we had well, I'm not gonna incriminate myself. The village. We had I'm a go here. I'm, 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 I'm about to say, I'm not gonna incriminate go myself. Well, what Eric. I will say is this. We today have a different upbringing because we didn't have all these electronics and stuff and access to all this stuff growing up as kids. No, basically, no, electronics was not They were shooting up schools when we was in school, y'all. They don't, don't believe that. They were shooting up schools when we was in high school, too. Gerald went to a high school and they got, got shot up a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the corner, though. <laughs> now, 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 I'm bringing you back. Now, I'm bringing you out of the corner. Let's go. All right. I've been telling him to make you come out the corner. Really? Really? He's got comfortable in the corner. You know, they're like, I'm some type of stepchild. No, I told you to come out the corner before I start reading the comments. Don't do that. Okay. So, back to the question Do you think it's better to be independent artist or mainstream artist? Once again, it goes back to once again, it goes back to the era that we're in, the era that we were in, and the era now. I think personally, this day and age, no, you don't need to be a mainstream artist in order to have success. Back then, yes, most definitely, because you had that machine pushing you. You had a uh, promotion. You had the radio. You had a lot of things that were contributing to your success, not just you and, quote, unquote, your street team um, doing what they got to do. And then not to mention, we didn't have the platforms that they have nowadays back then. So that's that's my answer to the to the, I, to the I question. Agree. You don't need to be mainstream to be an artist. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as you can push yourself and you can afford to do the things yourself, you can make it in this world. Um, Cardi B is a prime example. I know people are gonna be like, no, 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 but she is. She's only made one one album. She she started out as she was independent. She came out. Yes, Aaron. She was independent. I see you give me that look. On fact check this right now, y'all. What the hell? <laughs> well, continue with your statement and let him fact check. Anyway. Go ahead. She had one album come out this whole time. Now, I don't know if she's got a deal now, but she was independent when she started. Girl, move on. She was independent when she started. Don't tell me why she was definitely independent when she started. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. Now let him rebuttal. Let's go, Aaron. Let's hit it. <clears throat> According to Google, Cardi B is currently <laughs> signed to Atlantic Records. She's yeah. currently when she started, yeah. she wasn't. I mean, you start where you start is not where you finish. If that's the case, why did she stay independent? I'll wait. I don't know her reason for it, but all right, well, cool. Cardi B is currently signed to Atlantic Records. And when she first started, she still made a lot of you money. You also signed a publishing deal with Warner Chappelle Music Publishing. Okay, that's so, I, so let, that, let, that's let me, hill. That's a lot of hill. What's ahead, your question, we, So we're specifically talking about their entire. So what about those artists who have had huge fan bases before they even made it to the label? Like, are we separating that, or are we just talking about a complete conglomerate can, get, of someone that's give, independent? Can, can you give an example? From the beginning to end. Can you give an example? Do you really want me to give the same example again? Because I, I don't say Tyler the Creator. I'm talking, I don't give a fuck. I will you, use that yeah, nigga. Yeah, we know you can say that. We know you can, say that. You know you can say that all day. But mm. but I just but think it's personally, the, like, it is an example. Okay. I I feel like okay, but I'm just gonna say this. I'm just, I'm just gonna say this. And it, it, it going back to what Professor said previously, it just depends on how you push yourself and how you are able to present yourself to the world in. Because, like I said, God rest his soul, young Dolph. He was independent his whole career. So he didn't need to be mainstream, but he was mainstream, but he did it under his own uh his own, he did it his own way. We just gonna say that. So, but I, like I said, I don't know if he would have made it as far as far as popularity without these platforms, without social media, and without 
the the things that the tools that some of these artists have nowadays if he came out back then that's and all that's, that's, that's what, what I well, young Dolph, for independent artists well young Dolph be as big yeah. as what he was is now without his demise yes yes yeah yeah, he was big. He was big. Okay, he I'm asking you a question. Is, is, is Chance the Rapper an independent artist? No. It's what? Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper. That's, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if he's independent no, right now. Really That's a good question because I don't know. I think when he first started, he wasn't. He was, but he, I think he's I'm sorry, he but was I'm, I'm just saying, but I'm just saying, I'm just he saying, is, you he need, is an independent rapper. He is. Okay, so okay. he's an independent okay. rapper. So I can even say that Chance the Rapper is an independent artist, but look at what, how far he's come. I'm just saying that they couldn't have made it back then. That's all I'm saying. It just all depends on the era at what we're in, what we're talking about. It, like, what do you mean by era, though? I, I honestly, I think, okay, oh, like, okay, 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 okay. Like I said, back back when back when music back I'm not gonna say music, but back in the 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 eighties and nineties when rap and R and B and all that were reaching its peaks, you needed to be uh, uh, you needed to be on a um on a label in order to be seen. That's in order to be seen. Period. Let's just be honest, because like I said, but at the same but at the same time, though, you don't need it this day and age is because, like I said, many people have gone and done well for themselves because of the platforms that these people have that that are the tools that they have now, as opposed to back then. OK, let me ask you. So this then question. why don't we see more independent rappers in? Aaron, let me ask you this question. Do you think Nipsey would have been as big as he was if he didn't meet his demise? Nipsey is only big. Oh, Nipsey's only as big as he is because of his. I'm, I'm, I'm asking, but no, Nipsey, Nipsey was somebody that before his demise that everybody was following along too, and he was independent. Let's be real. Nipsey didn't get a Grammy award to after his demise. They finally decided to give him victory. They decided to give Victory Lap a Grammy. Like, are we being okay. for real? Okay. okay. Asking, my yeah. question was that was not my question. My question was, do you think he would have been as big as he was if he didn't meet his demise? No, I think his demise. I think people's demise have a lot of reasons why they, they become as big as what they are. I wouldn't say that, not for well, Nipsey. Well, I, and well, the reason I why the I wouldn't say the, the reason why I wouldn't say that is because of the shit that he had going before he was killed. But at the end of the day, let's keep, let's keep it real. Mention, and not, and not mention, I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. He was nominated for the Grammy before he was killed, and then not and then okay, win. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it may, okay. His demise may have pushed it through, maybe, exactly. but. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm, but but I can't even seriously say that though. Uh, double A. I can't Nipsey say. Was, that. Nipsey was getting there, but let's be real. Outside of the West Coast, people don't fuck with West Coast music. If we want to keep it a hundred. Okay. If we want, if you want to go, I mean that, that is a sad yeah. truth. But even but even beyond that though, based on what he was doing, like I I think well, in I this situation, I really don't think. I, I, I think, I think it, it, it didn't enhance it. I think it just showed how much he actually did touch it. Spotlighted. It spotlighted. It definitely yeah. enhanced it. It definitely enhanced it. I'm sorry. I think we're being a little bit biased because we live I here and we love Nipsey. You I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, keep it all the way fucking with you. I wasn't even listening to Nipsey like that until his demise, but I did hear Victory Lap before that's his demise. My point, my point wait, exactly. Wait, 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 wait. No, you that, that, that's my point exactly. You brought him in his track before he was finished. Listen to what he said. Hold on, hold on. But I did hear Victory Lap before his demise, and it was a good album. It was, it was, it, it was perfectly well deserved. You, you just of a Grammy of a Grammy nomination. Now, type of now. Yeah, like sometimes they do push it through because of your demise. But do I believe that he wouldn't have been known? No, I just think that I, he was stopped. Now, you 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 and took my statement too took far. I never said Nipsey. I never said I never said Nipsey would never been known because I think that yeah, what we Nipsey would have been known for sure. I just don't think the West Coast rappers get the same type of uh. What's the word you've been using all night, Heather? Conglat conglomerate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't, they don't look at that same you love worldwide. So I didn't day. go West Coast. What? I, I I I didn't say because he was a West Coast artist. I but, said just because he was an independent artist. 
That's okay, what I so look at. I think we took it away, completely away from the conversation. But to bring it back to that question, personally, when it comes down to the internet now, that is the main reason why these artists are able to push as hard as they can because they have more exposure and they're able to get their product out to way more people versus back in the days where you strictly were only able to get the music from the label and that's it. So same, that's question, the same question I posed to Gerald, and how come we don't see more independent rappers today or more independent artists today? Artists, not artists, but artists today. You saying why we don't see more? I mean, we was able, well, it was only the able name one successful independent artist, and that's Chance the Rapper. Okay, okay, you, okay, okay, okay. But you said money, money, you said money you, back. You yo, was able. He, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was about to say, is money back? Yo, uh, uh. I'm, and mind you, I don't listen to not, the guy, but he's not independent. He's not or, an independent artist. No. Isn't Maya an independent artist? Maya, what's is, is? Maya is now, but now. you can't. You can't, you can't, you can't really consider oh. that because she had a label to hold her whole popular career. But the, but this is but Chance, whole mainstream and who, career. And who has oh bought a Maya God. album since she's been independent? But wait a minute, wait. check this though. She didn't get a Grammy, a Grammy nominated album until she went independent. And and she still okay. didn't win. <laughs> my point exactly. But my point is, she still got she nominated. Nominated. Like she still. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop the nomination type stuff, man. That's like saying second place. You so are, I, wait, I wait, 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 I said he didn't win a Grammy until after his demise. And Gerald said but he I got said nominated he not, and he won. Nobody else said he got the Grammy. I didn't say nominated. Yo, yo, I didn't say no <laughs> <not> nominations, though. <laughs> I, oh, you brought oh, Grammy oh, into this, though. Nobody right, else said you. Let's go to the comments with y'all. Let's nominate. Let's go to the comments with y'all. Let's go to the comments with y'all. Let's go Let's go to the comments with y'all. Let's go to the Something else. Go ahead. I'll find you. Fuck no. Oh, we got the first answer. <laughs> Bane said, "Fuck no." Gio said, "It's better to be independent as long as the artist grind is nonstop," which is what I've always been saying. Gio said, "Nipsey was getting there." Uh, Payne said, "Why had the hair keep disappearing?" Wait, what? Payne, don't do that, know. man. Payne, leave, leave her hair alone. And then Please. Mama Cookie said, "Stop it, Mama. We just having a friendly." Conversation. We having fun. We having fun, Mama. You supposed to be out with your husband, Mama. Don't worry about it. We, oh, yeah, we good right. at the end. You supposed to be having fun. Trust me, we do this all. We 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 discuss like this all the time. But yeah, enjoy we yourself. Good, uh, y'all want to do one more question because we over our two hours. Let's cut it. Yeah, we. I guess we can get one more out. I will get one more. Um, <laughs> we gonna try that. Um, oh, oh, she oh, says she's talking to pain. Oh, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Tell him I'm a good guy. All right. Hmm. All right, we'll do this. How has the role of the female female rapper changed throughout the years? Oh, Jesus Christ. Another lovely um, question. I don't really necessarily think it's the role. I think it's the music. What they talk about has changed over the years. You know, it went from kind of conscious rap to now everything is, you know, about sex or body parts or anything like that. The rap has changed over the years, but it is what it is. It's definitely got nastier over the years. I will say that. I think in order, it has become one-sided, but I think also because the industry as well as the consumership doesn't allow for the diversity. So as much as people scream that they want, you know, different shit, it's like, okay, well, you need to support it in order for it to get out there. It's not what they want to hear. Go ahead, eh? I, I have nothing. Go ahead, meet Chargero. I have nothing at this point. Mother. Okay. No, I, I, I was going to ask you to, to, to kind of like you elaborate, want to elaborate on what you mean about as far as Okay, so for instance, as much as people talk about the vulgarity of the women nowadays and saying that they want the conscious rap and they want this, 
but then I'm not seeing like I yes, Rhapsody is out there, but I don't see people support her as much as they support the bullshit. So you can't sit here and say that you want it and then not support it. Like that's basically what I'm saying. I'm not saying that everybody does it because of course these people, everybody on the panel here knows who she is, but for the ones screaming all the time about what's wrong with music, you need to be a part of that change if that be the case. Mm. Okay, thank you. Well, I think back in back in our day, um, what day is that? I'm gonna say long, long, long time ago. <laughs> oh, that, that's your day. <laughs> Go with that, my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I just think I just think uh, rap, female rap, and rap in general personally has uh just changed just just changed with time. It's just like um, because like I said, you had conscious rap, you had Moni Love, Queen Latifah and all that. I mean, even before them, well, actually, even before them, you had MC Light, who was just spitting bars or whatever. Then you, Georgia you Porch was my came, shit. Yeah, most definitely. But then you had, um, then you had Conscious Rap kind of behind her. Then it became, you know, um, even before them, you had Salt and Pepper, but they did different aspects of it. I mean, it was just, you know, innuendo <laughs> to, the, to that shit. And then, uh, <laughs> then, you know, as uh, we got into the '90s, you had Little Kim, Foxy Brown, and you know they were they they were provocative. And then I think it kind of just stayed there. So, but then it got worse as the years progressed. So, see, just... I think the whole I agree with you, Jerry. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think that the whole perspective of like. The whole female rapper is it, it it kind of fizzled out because of what of, of what's being talked about nowadays nowadays before compared to back back then you know you had the like like everyone said you had the whole women empowerment you had the whole you had the whole women strong black woman you know preaching to preaching to you know the whole <laughs> chill that look bro <laughs> you're killing me <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me bro <laughs> like okay brother like, <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me bro all right all right all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> he, he actually was on to a good point though i ain't gonna lie uh, he was on there but yeah i'm just yeah, like but that look was killing me bro. <laughs> You just gotta let me yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's, man. It's like, bro, you ain't gotta be you ain't gotta be deep when you say it. Just say it. Like it's, it's, it's just, just that's like, just how it come out. If it come out deep, mm. it come out deep. You just that's you what she said. Ooh, that was get out my get out my brain, Aaron, because I was going there next. <laughs> nice, yeah, nice. But, but, but go ahead, Mitch. But, I'm sorry. But yeah, the whole yeah, but the whole message of women empowerment, uh, it really, it really, it really doesn't it's not as prominent today as it as it was compared to back then is what i'm saying all right okay. I, i'm gonna pick up where you left off i think we went from a a, a, a era of women empowerment to i have to be nasty and, and, and seductive to get attention to now i'm just gonna be filthy like like you you go from queen latifah and in, in, in unity to i'm gonna go to trina Lil Kim, Foxy Brown, and I have to be sexy, and and, and you know, and even Eve, I just show titties with like ball, like bear claws on them to get attention. Mm -hmm. To now, to now, we look at Sukiana making full pornos on and OnlyFans type shit. Like so you, you, you went from you basically saying you went from who you calling a bitch to this bitch right here gonna do this, this, and that. So you went from who you calling a bitch to now I am the bitch. Talk about yes. nigga eat, eating niggas asses. I'm like, bro, just. No, I don't. We got you, man. You, just you, just to to you just have to say that, Heather, huh? Anyway, we should be doing it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, oh. You know, you know, you know what? Another, I'm a girl another, another, another question, another day. But like I, but as I was saying, but yeah, it just, it just, it just, it, just, it, just it progress, it progressively got worse as the years 
started to. I think we all could agree. And, on and, I, I, and I didn't like the Eve statement because she had good gray titties, which is A or B's, and I didn't like that. But anyway, it was it wasn't um, a diss. Though. It wasn't a diss. But I'm just saying that, that, that would you be a fan if you didn't see the good gray titties? I'm done. Would you be, would you be a fan if, if, you, if you didn't see the good gray titties without the bear cross? Honestly, yeah. Like, because, right. like, because, but see, I wasn't attracted to you lie. Matter. You lie it. You lie it, Larry. Larry, like, you lie. I didn't like Eve till she got long hair. I'm going to be honest with you. Just <laughs> be, being perfectly honest, I wasn't attracted to Eve, but I thought she could rap, though. All That's right, just Larry. me. That's, That's just on, me. Larry. And she oh, put out good, and she. And she and she had good music at the end of the day, but was I attracted to her like that? No, because like I said, I like I like bad grade titties at the end of the day. But it, that's to each his own. But we want to get a comment so we can get a body here. Okay. Uh, Payne said, "What you mean, stop it? Her hair keep going in and out. The fuck going on? Look at the damn light behind me." <laughs> Then Mama Cookie said, I'm going to make you go to bed. Go, go down one, Heather. I'm going to make you go to bed, play nice. Jill said, it wasn't a role in the past. There's definitely a role now. Hey, I just say, either my internet fucked up or that damn blue light fucking with my eyes. And then he said the same thing. Gio said, the role isn't a good one, but by the way. Uh, Payne said either my internet fucking up or that's him. Okay, we can move on past that. Oh, wait, one more. more. I know. Stephanie, you in the building. She's late, but it's better yes. late than never. Hey. What up, Stephanie? As always. Late than never. You could have been anywhere in this world, but you're here with us. Hi, Steph. Steph. <laughs> if you ask these female rappers if today they will say they are rapping about female empowerment, it seems the term the definitions change and hence the content of the music change with it. They see sexual liberation as empowerment. Mm. 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 Really explain it. Pick. I see you, Steph. <laughs> Using you. Nothing. Never mind. With that being said, we have come to the end of the, tr to the tr trilogy of the industry the first so that we have come to the end of the first episode excuse me i am sorry eh? <laughs> i know i've been fucking up but <laughs> we have come to the first episode of the trilogy of behind the music and all that good stuff so you stay tuned for the uh for the next one which will be film and television but with that being said also i like to go to the uh to miss heather b your final thoughts about this Okay. Well, again, thanks everyone for tuning in tonight. Thank you for your input. We always appreciate your opinions and we continue continue to love the support that you give us. Um, in the comments, I do have a link tree so that you can social you can follow us on all of our social medias and things of that nature. Um, final thoughts. Um, no matter how bad the industry is, as far as the music industry, just the good and the bad, it still provides us with an opportunity to listen to our favorite artists and be blessed with music. So no matter what, just appreciate the gift of music in as a whole. Okay. Professor? Um, don't let people define who you are. Be who you are, listen to what you listen to. Whatever music you like, listen to it. Be you. Live, laugh, and love. <sighs> well spoken. Meach. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone that came in. They came in and showed out in the comments tonight. And as, as I always say, that energy is always received and it's always appreciated. Keep giving that same energy for each and every one of these segments that we do. And for final remarks, just never, just never, never be afraid to be true to yourself. Never be afraid. Never be afraid to be authentic. Never be afraid to be genuine, because. In today's world, that's more that's needed more and more each and every day. So eventually and just 
be just be real with you just be real with yourself because that's where you will earn the utmost respect from everyone that surrounds you i guess i beat double a i guess i messed up from last show that i said i was gonna put up a post and ask y'all for y'all uh y'all, y'all cr- criticism i never put that post up huh? so i will put it up this time so yeah um all y'all with uh criticisms and um compliments i'm gonna put up a post this week and i just want y'all to hit us with your remarks as far as how you feel that we doing what suggestions you have for us what criticism you have for us we'd love to hear it secondly um my final remarks have nothing to do with tonight's show but i do want to say um this past wednesday i lost a close friend of mine's um very healthy guy um had a brain aneurysm and um i would just say that um i think that uh love the people who you love uh don't be afraid to go to the doctor get your checkups um you can be the healthiest person in the world and still you're still gonna have an expiration date and um i think that we want to extend this expiration date as long as possible um so definitely uh love on the people that you love on go get your doctor checks and uh y'all be well love y'all right on my condolences um with that being said um final remarks uh basically like me just said don't don't afraid to don't be afraid to be who you are at the end of the day um just because we get on here and say our opinions about whatever it is that we say doesn't and doesn't mean we're trying to entice you to change or entice you to not be yourself we want you to continue to be yourself because like i said we don't need a world of this of one person or one dna person so with that being said i'm out i'm out but we appreciate the love we appreciate the support we appreciate everything that you know you guys pushing us and growing with us at the end of the day and um also we want to dedicate this show to aaron's friend we also want to dedicate this show to jerry springer who we also lost and also mr harry belafonte we we lost him this this week even though he lived to to see nine in his 90s but you know it's still a great loss for the culture at the end of the day with that being said take care of yourselves and each other we love y'all jay went to a spoon you gotta smell it Snakes. <laughs>